Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for April 11th. First order of business is to get me out of the seat and elect a new chair, and that is always run by our administrator, Marie Kripelka. Okay. The first order of business is tonight is to have an organizational meeting for the purpose of electing a chair and vice chair. So I'm going to ask nominations for the purpose of electing a new chair. Mr. Grilly? I'd like to nominate Diane Mahan as chairman. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, now we'll have a roll call vote. But wait. Move to close. Are there other nominations? Any other nominations? Oh, yeah. Are you new to this? Is this? <laughs> you think I'd know by now. <laughs> I'll move to close the nomination. Do I hear second. any other nominations? Hearing none, it's closed. And now we'll have a roll call vote. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Grilly? Yes. Mr. Byrne? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. <laughs> yes. All in favor, so we now have a new chair. Congratulations, Mrs. Mahan. Thank you. And now I'm going to open it for nominations for vice chair. I move to nominate uh, Daniel Dunn. Second. Move to close nominations. Is there a second? All in favor? No other nominations hearing none. We will go to the election of a new vice chair. I'll start with Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Grilly. Yes. Mr. Byrne. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Congratulations. So we have a new chair and a vice chair. Thank you. Thank you. First, I'd like to um, thank all my colleagues for uh, electing me chair. Um, I think uh, one of the things the board is well known for now is how efficiently and respectful we run our meetings, and I hope to continue on with that tradition um, that has been established by previous chairs. So with that, I would like to go to agenda item two. Thank you to Diamond and Platinum sponsors of the Patriots Day Parade Patriots Day Committee. Is there a re representative here from the Patriots Day Parade Committee? If you could come up to the microphone, just state your name. Hi, Christine. Hi. Thank you so much. Christine Bongiorno, Health and Human Services Director, and I have with me, um, you can say. <laughs> Hi, Bob Bose, Bose Real Estate, Arlington. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we're on the Patriots Day Parade Committee. Uh, thank you all for your support, and thank you for approving the parade this year and closing the streets and, and all of the other um, approvals that were needed for the parade to make it happen. Um, so we obviously could not have pulled this parade off this year without the support of our generous sponsors. Our diamond sponsor this year was Armstrong Ambulance. Our platinum sponsors were uh, Leader Bank as well as John's Landscape Service. Um, tonight, I believe we only have uh, Leader Bank with us, a representative from Leader Bank, only because of the change in schedule. I think um, schedules were, were a little off this week. So um, we wanted to uh, bring up the representative from Leader Bank to uh, publicly thank him for, or thank the bank for their generous support in allowing us to, to make it happen this year. Um, Mr. Fanchulo, if you'd like to come up. So we have here a plaque. Our top three sponsors are getting a plaque. Um, as you know from the schedule, we have a road race with the Boys and Girls Club at 8.45 in the morning on Sunday the 17th. Um, the top three parade sponsors are on the t-shirt. So Leader Bank has a place on the t-shirt as well as the other two, two sponsors. Um, and so every, every sponsor will be getting a t-shirt. Um, so if you want to hand this over to Mr. Fanchula. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and then the plaque as well. Okay. John, thank you so much. Um, we're so blessed to have Leader Bank in Arlington. You folks are always here supporting everything, and it means a great deal to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate the honor, and uh, we appreciate the uh, ability to uh, serve and help in any way we can to our um, town of Arlington, and we'll continue to do this as many years as we can into the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, John. Thank you all. 
Mr. Thank Byrne. You. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, are, are you, when you're done, let me know. Mm -hmm. I'll call. Thank you. I just wanted to say that at noon uh, on Sunday there'll be a battle reenactment. The Monotony Minutemen will be doing a, a reenactment, and then at 2 p.m. the parade will kick off from Brattle Square. Um, we have a number of great bands. Um, obviously, again, could not have pulled that off without the generous support of the donors and the, the, the sponsors. So thank you all. Yeah, I, I would just say that it's been a pleasure serving on the committee this year. Um, it's a very energetic committee under Christine's tutelage. She does a great job. Uh, but I would say to you that uh, I've been involved in the parade and the committee for <coughs> as many years as I can recall. I think this is going to be an amazing parade. We have a uh, we have a lot, of, a lot more bands than usual. We have floats this year, which we haven't had in a long time. So uh, the early weather forecast is 60 and sunny, so we hope you can all be there. Thank all you. Right. Uh, thank you very much, <coughs> Diane, and uh, thank you to the committee as well. I, um, we're really lucky in Arlington to have uh, volunteers like yourselves and the sponsors like Leader Bank, Armstrong, and John's Landscaping. I, uh, we rely on them quite a bit for um, you know, many different events, and they always step to the plate. So thank you all very much. Thank you. And of course, Bose. Yes. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, yes. thank you, Leader Savings and Bose. And thank you, Mrs. Bongiorno, Christine. Um, any further comment? If not, we'll say thank you, and we will see you at the parade, normal step, step, step off location. Yeah. All right. Yes. We look forward to it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, agenda item three for approval, discuss and adopt the complete streets policy. I know we have a few uh, department heads and others, uh, TAC members. Mr. Uh, Town Manager, if I could have you sort of guide us through yeah, this. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so tonight before the board for its discussion and uh, potential adoption is a complete streets policy. This has been something that's been discussed for quite a while now. Last year, the board voted favorably to recommend a town meeting, and town meeting voted favorably on top, adopting the Complete Streets statute. Uh, the board also endorsed us applying as a community for the community compacts to uh, adopt and implement a Complete Streets policy. So this is the next step in that, and we have uh, Director of Public Works, Mike Rademacher, Assistant Planning Director, Laura Wiener, and Representative of TAC, Scott Smith, here tonight to talk a little bit about the policy itself and answer any questions the board might have. Okay. Good evening. Um, I'm Laura Wiener, Assistant Director of Planning. Um, I know you have a long agenda tonight, so we'll try to keep it brief for you. Um, this policy group was developed, this policy was developed by a working group of TAC, chaired by Scott Smith, who's also here, as, as well as Mike Rademacher, who um, joined us on the committee and also will be the administrator of this policy. Um, the policy is a response to a recently created state program um, that is, is trying to encourage communities to build complete streets, which means a street that accommodates all users, drivers, pedestrians, bike riders, transit riders, and freight carriers. The current thinking in um, transportation planning is that the way to reduce congestion is not by building more streets or wider streets, but by encouraging people to drive less by making it safer and more attractive to walk, bike, and take transit. Um, both the federal and state government are moving in this direction. The state has made, um, will make available $400,000 in grants to communities who adopt these policies, a complete streets policy for construction of complete streets. Um, our policy, which you have, which you've had before you, um, will focus on the major streets that are accessible to public transportation. It builds on the bike facility network, which, we, um, which you have already approved in past years. It has reasonable policies for exceptions, such as for lightly traveled streets or streets that are too narrow to accommodate a bike path or even a sidewalk, and has performance measurements, which is a requirement of MassDOT. And lastly, as Adam mentioned, it was one of our um, community compact best practices that we um, promised to adopt. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Scott Smith now. I'm Scott Smith, a member of TAC and of town meeting. Uh, just point out uh, some reasons to support it. One, we're already doing it. Uh, both our pro major project just completed and the one now underway, both complete streets projects, uh, consistent with the master plan adopted by the town. And last year, acceptance of the legislation was supported by about a four to one margin at town meeting. 
And finally, I think it's consistent with our desire to be an inclusive, welcoming community to, to everyone. So. Mike Rademacher, uh, Director of Public Works, thank you. I, I, I just echo what Scott um, said, that uh, it's somewhat uh, uh, an, an easy next step for the town of Arlington. Uh, a lot of the projects we work on now, we, we try to accommodate all these different uh, facets of, of transportation and to memorialize it in a policy and make ourselves available for some funding um, seems like the right thing to do. Okay, um, Mr. Dunn? Um, I'd like to move approval on the complete streets policy. Second. Uh, um, so I, I agree with uh, what the speaker said that this is something that we've uh, been doing as a town for a while and I have absolutely endorsed it and I've tried to encourage it and I think that this is a, a further encouragement. I think that uh, when, you know, some of the ways that the roads were built in town, um, you know, were built for a different era and different modes of transportation and I think that we are, have correctly recognized that we need to be um, more open to multiple methods of uh, of transportation, not just personal cars. And I think that this uh, document does a lot towards addressing the balance of what we need uh, for transportation in Arlington. So I'm very happy to support it. Okay. Um, any further comments, Mr. Kiro? Uh, th thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, like, like my colleague said, this is a no brainer. Um, I, I just had one question on the performance measures. Um, would I be right in assuming that we already have the baseline measures in place, or will you? be compiling those once, um, once the policy is adopted? Um, I think once we choose a project, we will have to do a baseline measure before we um, do the construction. Okay, great, thanks. And while you're at the mic, maybe you wanna give a, uh, you wanna give a plug to Wednesday evenings um, oh, yes. forum, um, which, which is directly related. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, on Wednesday evening, um, the DPW and planning department together are hosting a, um, a planning session to um, talk about the phase two of the Mass Ave, which uh, starts at Pond Lane and goes to Mill Street, and um, so focuses on Arlington Center and sort of just to start visioning of what we would love to see that look like there and revitalize the Arlington Center. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Grayley? It's at 7 o'clock in uh, the Town Hall Auditorium. Thank you. Mr. Grayley? Yes. Um, I, my colleagues have already made all the comments, but I believe where we have already best embraced uh, this concept is in the East Arlington Corridor project. And we fought long and hard uh, for that project, but I was stunned to see recently, not stunned, but pleasantly surprised, Realtor.com listed the 30 top neighborhoods to live in in the United States and East Arlington is one of those top 30. Um, the, those who are flocking to this town, and please continue to do so, they want to walk, ride their bikes, and take mass transit. Uh, I'll still be driving, but <laughs> anyhow, congratulations to all of you. Okay, um, hearing no further comment on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank you for all that work. <coughs> and we'll see you in the future. It's not over. Yeah. We now have the uh, consent <laughs> agenda. Um, I'll read through everything on the agenda. If anyone is here to speak to any particular item, um, please just raise your hand and make yourself known. Minutes of meeting March 7, 2016, a request by Jeffrey Chunglo, our Director of Veteran Services, for the permit for Memorial Day Parade on Monday, May 30th, 2016. A vote for a special municipal employee, Arlington Recreation Department, our Director of Recreation, Joe Connolly. A request by the Farmer's Market Winery application slash sale of wine for Coastal Vineyards, David W. Nielsen, 61 Pardon Hill Road in South Dartmouth, Mass. A request by the Hardy School PTO for their annual walkathon on Friday, April 29th from 2.30 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eva Bitteker, Hardy School PTO. A request for a one-day beer and wine license on May 7th, 2016 at the Robbins Whittemore House for a private party, R.T. Aaron, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> and then we have appointments of new election workers, and I apologize if I say any name incorrectly. Patricia Below, 15 Murray Street, on enroll for Precinct 12. 
Priscilla Brosve, 4 Winslow Street, unenrolled for Precinct 11. Thomas Fitzgerald, 67 Stowcraft Road, unenrolled for Precinct 21. Elaine Forrest, 54 Medford Street, Democrat, Precinct 7. Adrian Landry, 34 Hamilton Road, Democrat, Precinct 2. Doris Noviello, 4 Winslow Street, Democrat, Precinct 10. Jillian Patty, 30 Tower Road, unenrolled, Precinct 17. Kathleen Roche, 121 Newland Road, unenrolled, Precinct 21. Donna Shaw, 273 Cambridge Street, unenrolled, Precinct 14. Louise Thompson, 8 Summer Street, Democrat, Precinct 14. <coughs> Colleen Tremblay, 112B, Sunnyside Ave, unenrolled for Precinct 2. Uh, I'd like to have a motion to approve consent agenda. Move approval. Moved by Mr. Burns, seconded by Second. Mr. Greeley. Um, I would ask if there is anyone here, whether it's the Memorial Day Parade, uh, Farmer's Market, Hardy School PTO, and seeing none. Um, any further discussion by my colleagues? Mr. Carroll? Uh, thank you. Uh, it's my understanding that there's been a slight update to the uh, minutes just to reflect that we, we did vote on the full membership of the uh, Minuteman Building Project Assessment Task Force, and, and those have all been enumerated. Okay, Mr. Burman, we'll take that as a friendly well, amendment. Certainly will. Yeah. Still seconded by Mr. Dunn. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote with the amendment. We'll now go to licenses and permits. Renewals for approval, cafe outside seating permit. We have common ground at 319 Broadway, Ristorante Livio, 201 Mass Ave, and the Madrona Tree at 315 Broadway. Uh, is there anyone who would um, like to speak to this item, this agenda item? If Mr. Dunn? I just have, so last year was the first year that we implemented um, mo all of these, I believe, and so we're coming up on round two. And uh, Mr. Manager and uh, Madam uh, Administrative Secretary, I forget your title, but Marie, Mayor. Board we'll go with Mayor. Um, <laughs> uh, have there been has there been a lot of feedback that you've heard? Everyone's in favor of it. They, they all love it. They want to continue further down the avenue, which I'm sure we'll be getting some more requests with the good weather coming for East Arlington, Florida. Yeah, I, frankly, I have to say I've not really heard any feedback other than a certain resident who does let the board know his feedback from time to time. Um, I'm happy to uh, move approval. Second. Second. Moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Greeley. I also heard Mr. Byrne. Um, any further discussion, Mr. Carroll? Yeah, I just had one question. I might have to direct this to the, the, the office as well. Um, the, there was a reference here uh, to uh, the experience with one of the uh, applicants uh, regarding the use of umbrellas with uh, alcohol-related logos and some issues with the buffer zone between their outdoor seating and an adjacent establishment, and that there, there, there was a little bit of back and forth in getting that resolved. It's supposed to be done. But now, when they put the tables out this time, that, that umbrella can't go up. Do we to need it. to put that in as a, as a condition? He sent a registered a letter, so he has it in writing. A registered letter from the board plus the building department. Okay. It's up to you if you want to put it in writing. I guess we could put it as a... As a I, I took it that it was already in there. Is it just in being there? in the uh, just not It would being, be a subject. Not being... Mm. Yeah. Then perhaps um, I'll revise my vote just to be clear. Uh, move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Perfect. That's perfect. That I can agree with because um, with one of the um, renewals, which I am going to vote in favor of, um, I have had preliminary conversations with the town manager and town council about something um, that was brought to my attention, but I don't know if it's a case in point that actually exists. So um, with the uh, revising of... Mr. Dunn's motion, seconded by Mr. Grayley. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now have a request, handicap parking sign at 911 Oxford Street by John A. Caruso. Is Mr. Caruso here? Yes. Good evening. If you can just say your name and address just for the yes, record. Yes, John Caruso on Lexington, Mass., 17 Sanderson Road. I'm here to speak on behalf of my mother and my sister. Uh, both residents living there uh, handicapped. My mother is 101. My sister is 80 and uh, re recovering from a broken hip operation. 
It's very difficult to pick them up for doctor's appointment, shopping, and so forth because of parking in front of the house. Um, although there is a driveway, it's nearly impossible to make a swing into the driveway because of the way the cars are parked in front of the house. Um, if cars were not parked so close to the driveway entrance, the swing into the in and out could be completed. Therefore, we're requesting a handicap or a no parking section so we could get in and out of the driveway unimpaired. Um, that's my request. Move approval. Mr. Byrne moves approval. Second. Seconded by Mr. Carroll. Any further discussion? Um, just with the caveat, when there's a snow emergency, you know, we do ask that um, the car be placed somewhere else when the. <coughs> God bless, bless you. you. Snow emergency is, is declared. Um, and then also, there will be the handicap placard sign out there. And 99.9% .9 of the time, because um, it sounds like you have all five votes, um, you'll be parking there um, for your mom and sister. But yes. if somebody else with a placard happens to come along and parks there, they can do that. But I ha haven't, haven't ever heard that happen. But I just want to make sure you're aware of that. So on a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by. Mr. Greeley, did you have any comments? I just Mr. had Greeley? a question. Yes. 101, is she heading out dancing or uh, <laughs> God love She's her? She's unbelievable. I mean, I still take her shopping. She hangs on to the cart, but <laughs> she comes with me. Wow. So she's been great. God bless her and your sister and yourself. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank On you. A mo motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Greeley. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, what I would like to do this time, because I know there are another meeting or two that they have to go to, is take an agenda item out of order. Uh, agenda item 17, a former colleague, Clarissa Rowe, chair of the Commun Community Preservation Act Committee, CPA, with their funds draft recommendations. And my whole committee, please. Not the whole committee, because um, three of them had conflicts. Oh, dear, what have I done? Uh, I'll let them introduce themselves. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Chuck Taroni from the Conservation Commission. <coughs> Joanne Robinson, Historical Commission. Eric Helmuth, you appointed me. <laughs> you appointed me. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie Mayor, Park and Recreation Commission. Richard Murray from the Arlington Housing Authority. Andrew Pinkson, also a selectman appointed. Uh, this is a wonderful committee, and I want to thank you for appointing the people that you did appoint. Uh, we, I believe you've seen our draft recommendations. You know about the money, and we're really here to ask, um, answer any questions and to ask for your support. Hey, Mr. Greeley. Uh, uh, I, uh, m m do you want approval? You want us? What do you want? Or yeah. We love you. I move we love you. <laughs> But really, what a spectacularly done report. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, see this man here? Yes, yeah. yes. Behind me? Yes. He, he does saying. spectacular work. Yes, he does. Uh, yes, yes, but that's wonderful. a beautiful report. Very well done. Okay, I'll mo second. Motion by Mr. Second. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Curo. Uh, Mr. Dunn? I just have a question which you may or may not be ready for, which is, so what about next year? <laughs> what do you think is going to be different or... Or are you just like you've been racing through to the finish line and you'll say we'll talk about next year next year um, we're first of all we're gonna have a real schedule that makes sense so that, that we're in the traditional budget cycle so that we mm -hmm. have warrant articles in January mm -hmm. and we can go to the budget sequence that we should be going through it was um, you know we worked very very hard and we did our best and you know we take what we're doing very seriously and there was a lot of work that had to go into making sure that all the projects were ready. Mm -hmm. We think the five that we put in front of you are ready. Okay. So, um, and we will have a public meeting and you know, any, we're gonna, after town meeting, we're gonna have a celebration at my house. They don't even know yet. <laughs> but, and we'll figure out how to do it even better. But I'm, I'm really pleased with what's come out of it. Thank you. 
Mr. Greeley? I actually did have a question. Sorry, just help me. That's okay. Town meeting actions are limited. The difference between reject recommendations and reserve amount recommended to applicable reserve account rather than approving the project. What's the difference between those two? Well, town me in town meeting, town meeting can really, they can vote a project up or down. Right. If we say, like Robbins Farm, it's six, 636,000 something dollars. Right. They, somebody could get up and say, I don't think that project's worth that. We think that it only should be $500,000. And then they put a motion on town meeting floor and the, and the body votes for that. And the 136,000 goes back to back CPC? In, okay. Go back, goes back into the fund, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Mr. Carroll. Thank you very much and thank you to the committee for all of your hard work. <coughs> um, I was able to catch part of the, the uh, presentation of the, the, the uh, project uh, proponents a couple of weeks ago, and um, they were every bit as impressive as the report that we have um, in, in front of us. And you know, I, I see this as a great success, and, and um, I think that what you've put forward really demonstrates everything that we talked about when we were proposing the uh, CPA for, um, or Ms. Rowe was proposing the CPA for, <laughs> for Arlington. Um, you know. Yes, the shovel-ready projects, and yes, if you look through these, a lot of them are, are leveraging, in some cases, volunteer help, in many cases, funds from other places, including CDBG. There's uh, the Robbins Farm Park project in particular is actually um, addressing a need that has been in the capital budget for many, many years, and we just haven't been able to, to, to push to the, to the top. And um, I, I think it's impressive. I, I think that the, the breadth and the depth of the, the projects here um, are, are just right. really Right, and impressive. Dean Carman pointed out to me that if we hadn't accepted the Robbins Farm one, the town wouldn't have had the money to do the overage for the Stratton School. So, right. And then with um, Drake Village work, I think it's bringing $1.4 million into the town. Mm -hmm. So it is, that's what it should do is leverage. So, thank you for, for great work. If I um, don't have much to add, just to thank you as well, and I think that it's <coughs> also pretty important to see that they span across the entire town. When you look at the map, it starts up the heights and goes <laughs> yeah. all the way down the East Island. Andrew so, did the map. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, and I, I think that's great. So, thank you all very much. You're welcome. And I want to say thank you to everybody who serves on this committee. I'm a bit jealous when I see all the different names on the committee. I'm like, I want to be on that mm -hmm. because it's, it's such a great meeting of the minds and the cadre of, of um, expertise that you all bring, as well as I really enjoyed the report, and I, and I spoke to Ms. Rowe about it, in terms of the amount of work that you all had to do in a really condensed amount of time at the very beginning, which probably will be, will be a one-time thing, but how you... you because now you know you know the ropes and others do as well in terms of what the process is um so hopefully for you all going in the future but it seems like from what i read in there um that will um, not have to be so much work done by so few so quickly um and i really do appreciate that on a motion by mr byrne if there is no further discussion <coughs> seconded by mr greeley all those i mean motion by mr greeley seconded by mr Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Are you all here also for Article 58? Yes, okay. and for. I just want to let them go to their next meeting, if that's okay with my yeah, colleagues. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, 58 and, or just 50? 57. We're asking for positive votes of support. Okay. No. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm. We're, a <laughs> we're asking for no action on 57. No, on 58. On 58. <laughs> Yeah. So moved. It's a good thing he's with me. <laughs> okay, it? on Article 58, a motion. Of and I no withdraw the "I love you" uh, motion. From the <laughs> <laughs> motion of no action by Mr. Grayley, seconded by. I'm, I'm trying to on figure out. 50, the draft of the plan. The draft of the plan. On 58, because I don't have 57 before me for some. Could I just offer a brief explanation? So we put 58 in there, not knowing where we would be with the community preservation plan, and where we ended up was a draft. And we thought, you know, rather than ask town meeting to debate a resolution for a draft that's not finished yet, we would, we would say, let's give you the draft, we'll hand it out, invite their comments over the summer, we'll hold our second public meeting that really is sort of a miniature master plan kind of process. Uh, we also plan, by the way, we've uh, 
scheduled with Vision 2020 to put some questions about CPU <coughs> priorities on the uh, census survey that, that goes out at the end of the year. So we're going to keep gathering community input about priorities and finalize the plan and then um, come back next year to town meeting and ask for their support. Mr. Dunn, did you? I, I, thank you. Uh, so I just want to double check. So we're, we're, you're passing out a draft, but you're seeking a no, a no formal action on it at this Correct. time. Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, that actually wasn't clearing to me coming into tonight, so I'm... The draft was just made from existing plans, like mm -hmm. existing master plan, existing open space plan, but we didn't have enough time to really <coughs> kick the tires and get a whole lot more public input, and we'd like more. And one of the things, the housing plan is not done yet, and we would really like to incorporate the recommendations from the housing plan that's being done into our um, recommendations for next year. Okay. Okay, a motion by Mr. Greeley for no action, seconded by Second. Mr. Kiro. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> Unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will now go back to the agenda. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a tickle that just won't go away. Agenda item 13 for approval, A-Town Jazz Festival banners um, submitted by Dan Fox. Is Mr. Fox here? You could just say your name and whatever affiliation and explanation you can give us. Sure, Dan Fox. Uh, I'm the owner of Morningside Music Studio, a local music school in town. And um, I am also put on the A-Town Jazz Festival. It's going into its fifth year now. Um, it's very hard to get the word out. I'm sure most of you have not heard of it, even though I've had articles in The Advocate and in The Globe and so forth. So uh, this year is the biggest year so far. I'm incorporating it over three days, um, April 29th to May 1st, and six different venues around town. And I'm trying to really make it a community event from now on. This is my goal all along. And so this is the first year I've been able to expand it. And I, I really want to get the word out to people to finally know about it, to be able to put the banners in the center of town. And I also have venues on, in East Arlington and the Heights, so I don't know if it's possible to have banners in different spots, but. Um, okay. Uh, move approval. Moved by Mr. Byrd, seconded by Mr. Carroll with a question. A second with a question, yeah. The question, the question I guess is just um, how many banners, which locations, like how many each location and which dates are you looking to put them up? Um, well, I'd say as soon as possible to, to, to let people know about it. Um, I'm, get, I'm thinking maybe a dozen banners, most of them in the center of town, a couple on the, on, in the Heights and, and the East Arlington. Okay. I don't know if the, I was I don't say know if the manager or the DP, uh, not to put him on the spot, he's here for something else, the <coughs> DPW director knows if we can accommodate that number without interfering with some of the others that are up right now. Yeah, actually, I, I would call on, on the town manager in terms of, A, for East Arlington, we're sort of in the beginning of setting up a process in terms of, um, and I believe that falls under your purview. And then the center one, does that fall under yours and the Board of Selectmen? So if I could hear from Mr. Chapelain and Mrs. Kropelka, or if you want Mr. Rodemacher. Well, so in terms of the process, my understanding has been East Arlington in the center, the, still the board's jurisdiction of whether or not banners will go up. Uh, one of the challenges is going to be the new brackets in East Arlington are a different size than the brackets mm -hmm. in the center, so I think it's going to be probably one location or another based on how large they are. Sure. Have, have you had them fabricated yet? No. Um, we have the design, um, which I, I emailed, so it's, it's available to, for you to see. Um, I, the size of it is, is made for the, the size that I believe are in the center, the, the center. 30 by 60. So there are banners up right now in regards to that art project founded mm -hmm. by the uh, family of Thomas uh, Hartel, is that how you do you know of, of Gracie James. Gra Gracie James' uh, family, but I think they are only on one side or the other. Uh, perhaps Mike and I could coordinate, we could give you the proper sizes to order uh, to okay. make sure they fit on the brackets. We've yeah. had some situations where banners have been ordered and not fit on the brackets in the past. Uh, we can, and we could give a count of what's available in terms of space. Right. Okay, so Mr. Fox will coordinate with the <coughs> town manager and whomever else he designates. Mrs. Kropalka, does he need to also contact you? I don't in the think his, his uh, at EPN is up at the Heights mm -hmm. goals to hold. Right. And they haven't put yeah, the dog yeah, no, the, 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 to hold it yet, so I, I don't think the Heights is doable at all. Okay. But the center and the 
East Arlington if you could work it out. And then we have Arlington Alive signs going up, so you'll have to work it out with the schedule. Okay, so why don't we have Mr. Chapelain be the point person, and if there's anything that you, you need to inform or inquire of the Selectman's Office through so Mrs. Kropalka. Now from April 29th to May 1st, correct? That's the first yeah. business that you want, which is only a couple of weeks away. Yeah, yeah there's not much time. <laughs> we might be able to accommodate you on that, because I'm not sure if the BNs are, are they up for the Arlington Festival, film mm. festival? Uh -huh. no. I don't think so. Don't we'll think we'll so. let all, yeah. all the think tanks on the left with Mr. Yeah. Fox um, figure that out and wherever appropriate in spaces available. Um, so uh, I believe the town manager gave you some contact info. So if you could start with him and then you may trickle down to one or two other people. Uh, any further discussion, Mr. Dunn? Just uh, with the time frame, I guess I'm a little bit worried about whether it will happen this year or whether you're going to make it. But regardless, if you try again next year, I'm happy to support it again. Just see with a little more run up, we can uh, get it more scheduled better, I think. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Um, see no further discussion on a motion by Mr. Byrne, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you, Mr. But if, if, if one quick question, yes, from Madam Chair. So, uh, if people want no, uh, Dan, is it, if people want information? You say it's over a number of venues. Yes. Uh, where where would they go? The website. The website, and it's on the banner. Okay. And it'll be in posters around town. Atownjazz.com is it? Atownjazz.org. Yeah. Dot org. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, agenda item 14, submitted by Mary Jo Sargent, Body and Brain Yoga, approval for a sidewalk sale to benefit Earth Citizen Organization at Body and Brain Yoga, 325 Broadway, on April 16th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Is Mary Jo here? No, oh, I didn't see you in the corner, sorry. Uh, hi, I'm Mary Jo Sargent. I'm here representing um, Body and Brain Yoga and Tai Chi at uh, 325 Broadway. And this event is a uh, fundraiser to raise money for uh, the Earth Citizen Organization. It's a nonprofit international organization that provides um, low cost education to environmental leaders um, who will then in turn go into their own communities to do. Uh, environmental outreach um, on a volunteer basis. So it's a fundraiser that we held last year, and I don't know if there were any issues last year, but I'm here to ask for that permit again this year. Move approval. Second. Moved by Mr. Kuro, seconded by Mr. Greeley. Um, any questions? All those, uh, see no further discussion? Oh, Mr. Greeley? So uh, the sale is to sell uh, it's a um, donation of yard sale, okay, so it's right. secondhand items, five and ten dollars, and uh, actually some of that money will go towards an event we're having at Monotony Park, uh, June eighteenth. Uh, also, to it's a um, like a mindfulness walk uh, that anyone can attend. So okay. that's one of the acti activities we're doing. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, seeing no further discussion, motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Greeley. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. <coughs> Good luck, Mary Jo. Thank you, Thank you for Thank doing you. that. We come to agenda item 15, sign requests on Ravine Street from <coughs> Rebecca and Doug Perlow. I see a familiar face. Good evening. I'm Doug Perlow. I uh, live at 40 Irving Street. If you've <coughs> read my letter, I don't really need to add to it. I can answer questions. If you haven't read the letter, I can explain. Okay. Um, you want to give maybe a brief? Sure. Very simply, uh, when we first moved into the house back in 95, uh, because of the school across the street, uh, people were parking right up to the both edges of our driveway. We were having a tough time getting, especially out safely, in but mostly out. We asked, we came here, my wife actually did, uh, in 96 and got approval for a no parking sign, a space with uh, space, space length uh, adjacent to our driveway. That sign was put in, it said no parking here to corner with no arrows. And people didn't, people still parked next to our driveway because they didn't know if it meant the corner being our driveway or the corner being Ravine and Irving Street. So a kind police officer, who I, I cannot for the life of me remember who it was, said, why don't you paint the curb yellow, which we did, and why don't you put an arrow on the sign, which we did. 
and we went one step further and defaced the sign by putting the word driveway. So it said, no parking here to driveway with an arrow toward the driveway. That worked for 18 or so years. Uh, last year sometime, the sign inexplicably was removed. We asked DPW to replace it. They replaced it as they had originally with a no parking here to corner. And we, I think we sent one example of a photo, but it's daily. People don't understand that it means no parking here to driveway. They park right between the sign and our driveway, bringing back the old problem. So all we would like, and uh, Mr. Chenard says the sign people won't make a sign with that language unless you folks approve it. Mr. Byrne? Now, question? did the sign, um, I'm, I'm going through the different letters that I have here, quite a few of them actually. And um, so did the sign, did it, they already moved the location of it back to its original location? The sign is in its original location. Okay, and there have been no changes? It says no parking here to corner, no arrows, and people must, people believe that it means from the sign to the corner of Irving Street rather than from the sign to our driveway. And even since the sign has moved locations, people have still been parking there? The location is what it's always been. Once they put it back, it's, it's back where it's supposed to have been, where it always has been since you folks approved it back in 96. So, so the location is the same, but yes. the wording is Okay, so is you different. want the wording change. And, you know, I, I guess my, I've been going back and forth because there are sign regulations, right? That Understood. We, um, that we have to follow kind of for everywhere in town. And I don't know if I'm, I'm quite ready to move away from those sign regulations. And I'm sorry that you know, of the board back in 1996. I, I'm sure we can point to Kevin for that one. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, He's um, the only one. I'm 99. My brain here, <laughs> trying to remember. But, uh, but you know, I, I'd, I'd be interested to hear from my colleagues, but I'm, I'm on the fence on it, and I don't know if I'm ready to make that motion or support it. Uh, I understand what we're looking at is, from a practical standpoint, one sign has people doing what they're supposed to be doing. The 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 the, the standard sign that meets your regulations has people doing the opposite. So, and for 18 years, the altered sign, we altered, mm -hmm. stayed in place and worked fine. And no one said anything and no one bothered anyone. I, and I also don't know if I, I would be supporting defacing signs around town. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm guilty of that, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but it worked. And that's really what we're looking at is a practical solution. Mr. Dunn? Um, I'm, I, I'm ready to support the, 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 the proposed change. Um, I definitely understand. I'm generally someone who would say, you know, the, the signs are the way they are for the reason, and they've got the, the uniform code is there for a reason. But at the same time, um, sometimes specific situations do warrant deviations. I can't recall having heard one of these and, be, and being in favor of it before as a board. For me, this is unusual, but at the same time, I, that it, because, partly because of the streets, that are going on there because of the hill and because of the off-center intersection there that's a um, academy. Um, so um, I'm happy to support it. Mr. Carroll. I think I'm having the same struggle that Mr. Byrne is having with this. And one of the reasons for my struggle is we have the original minutes in our packet. And when I read the minutes, it says the chairman moved to amend the traffic rules by placing a no parking sign on the right side of Ravine Street to the corner of Irving Street voted unanimously, which indicates to me that the intention of the board at that time was actually to prohibit parking from the sign to the to the corner. It wasn't a reference to the to the driveway and the original vote. So um, it feels to me like the original intent was actually to 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 do exactly what the, what the standard sign says. And I have read that, and uh, you know, the intent when we came here in 96 was to do what I'm asking you to do now. How the minutes were worded and what exactly was approved, it's, it, it's hard to say. Yeah, and I'm wondering if maybe your intent and the board's intent diverge, maybe there was, I, I don't know, I'm just, it just all I know makes, is what's in the minutes, so. It's. It makes little sense to make no parking in three what are currently valid spaces yeah and then allow parking right adjacent to our driveway. That's the yeah. opposite of what we're trying to, what we were trying to do in 96 and what we're trying to do now. But I, I would note, and we got correspondence from DPW and from the police department that it's illegal to park that close 
to your driveway in the in yeah, well, first place. Yeah. Try and I'm, tell I'm the worried. I know, I know. I understand, but I'm, I'm a little worried about I, I setting a precedent. Saying, yeah. Yeah. I think what you're saying is that that sign isn't needed in that particular location because we do have, it's illegal to pop, and park I'm within 20 I'm feet. I'm worried that if we, we start putting signage up to protect driveways, the, the, the distance from driveways, we've, we start setting a precedent. That can I see? Oh, let me just yeah. get from all them and you can, uh, yeah. Mr. Greeley. So the picture I'm looking at, no parking, here to driveway with an arrow, that's the one you defaced? That's, that's the altered sign. But that's what you would also like to see. That's what we had for 18 years. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make this tough in the chair and agree with Mr. Curo. I think we should do this. It's a unique intersection, in my opinion, to say the least. Um, I think you want to agree with Mr. Dunn. Mr. Dunn. Second, Dunn. Second, yeah. oh, Mr. Dunn. Oh, you switched seats. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Dunn. Sorry, well, I shaved my head this it, week. If I yeah. might, if it eases. Can I just check? It, oh. um, just where we are at this point, um, anyone else here from the board? Okay, I'll give you one more turn, Mr. Perlow. Simply, if it said no parking here to corner with an arrow toward the driveway, I know you have signs with arrows. Right now, there's, there's just, it's anybody's guess which corner it's talking about. Mm -hmm. So that would perhaps be a compromise. I think arrows are allowed, but mm -hmm. I guess you have to look and, them up. And I them. would be more amenable to that option where it's indicating, Mr. Dunn? Uh, just one th thought that specifically towards uh, one of Mr. Caro's arguments, which is the what the intent of the board was before. Yeah. Frankly, um, well, I agree that considering their intent is important, uh, we get to make our own, own decisions. No question. Yeah. Okay. No question. Okay. Um, Mr. Grayley? Plus, the board was not as bright back then as it is <laughs> here today. I just want to uh, point out. I'm so going to leave that one alone. But am I right? Am I right? There, there absolutely is no room from your driveway to the corner for a car to fit, right? Well, there's just between the sign and our driveway, one car fits perfectly. Right, but I'm talking about the other side of your driveway. Oh, the other side, no. No, but right, okay. No. Thank you, Madam Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to, I need to respond to Mr. Dunn. I mean, I think my point in that is just that it's a question as to whether we're taking a vote to create a new precedent or we're taking a vote to, to um, correct an existing uh, situation. Um, or, or a previous situation that's been in effect for 18 years. Okay, I do, oh, Mr. Byrne? Yes, I do I have one idea. Maybe that will make it easier for Mr. Perlow and potentially keep it so we don't start messing around with sign language. Um, what if we just move the sign closer to the driveway so that one car couldn't fit there? Would that then stop it? That, that I, seems to be a potentially practical situation where we could stop this problem without, you know, messing around with sign language that's in state law or in, you know, our bylaws. And I think, um, I mean, I, I don't know if we'd need someone from the town to, to look at the potential placement of it, but I think that will solve our problems and kind of hit a precedent here or hit a compromise here. Yeah. The idea makes sense. I don't know how people will respond, but I can't well, predict how they respond. That's but, the problem. But I mean, I think that's, that's a sensible solution that is in the right direction. So, I, um, it, can I ask the town manager if that would be uh, something that the town would have to look at, or can we just vote on it? What would, what would you be comfortable with? So you've got your automatic 20 feet back from the corner. Mm -hmm. You've got your automatic three feet. I think it's three feet from the driveway. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it is the, the board or the parking commission, so it's yeah. within their purview. So I, I think I'd like to move it, you know, say half the distance between the driveway and the current placement of the sign, which will stop cars from parking there, and there will still, the sign will still denote that it's illegal. And I'm uh, happy to make that motion right now. A second if it's in order. Okay, so we'll have um, two motions on the table before us as of right now. Mr. Greeley? What's the other motion? Was there an Originally, Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Carroll, was to approve the original request. No. 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 Oh, you didn't, didn't second it? Okay. I didn't actually formally move it. Oh, I, I thought I you said like I'm ready to. I'm sorry. I no. Okay. I, I would like to make a motion. Yeah. After Mr. Burns' motion? Yeah, yeah. This okay. is out there and on okay. the table with the second. Mm -hmm. I mean, would you rather we vote on that first? No, no. Or I'd or like to hear would both. Would you rather we defeat that soundly first? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no. Here, what I'm going to, I would recommend this compromise uh, move that we 
Make it no parking here to corner and add the arrow. The only thing we're being wild on here is adding the arrow in the direction to which it applies. Second. Seconded by Mr. Dunn. Okay, so um, Mr. Burns' more original motion is now folded into Mr. Greeley's compromise motion, which I also agree with. That was the one that I was more amenable to, Mr. Kiro. I just need some clarification on that. Is is the idea that we want to prohibit parking between that sign and the driveway, but allow it from the sign to the corner with Irving? There is no room. There's no room the with the with the 20 feet from the intersection and the three feet from the driveway, it's not allowed anyways, but I guess what we're saying is the positioning of the sign will make it clear that that space. No, I understand, but which, which direction would uh, we see the arrow pointing? Towards the driveway or towards the Towards the driveway. Towards the driveway, which is also towards the mm -hmm. corner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Perlin? No, I, I, I'm sorry, you uh, may have yeah, it. The driveway up? is the opposite way from the corner. Yeah. If you look at the map. But the arrow's going to point towards your driveway. Uphill toward the driveway. Right. So I think let's, that's yeah, leave it at that. Oh, south. Wait, nah. <laughs> because there's, <Yeah>. because <laughs> no, downhill from. Idea. You know what? Can I move the table so we all can take a look at it physically? <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, I, okay, motion by Mr. Greeley to table. Second. I'm sorry. Seconded by sorry. Mr. Dunn. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. And Sorry, then, but okay. And then um, physically look at just it. Just so yeah. when we come back for the next meeting, I would just ask um, through the town manager if there are any logistical issues in terms of who is actually um, coming up with uh, sketching and um, creating the sign. Um, if that's all going to be the town of Arlington, or if not, um, coordinate with Wayne Chenard or whoever, Mr. Rademacher. Am I saying this right, Mike? Um, so when we come to the next time we have this at our meeting, which undoubtedly will be our next meeting, but I won't commit to that, that, that second part in terms of the logistics of if we do move approval for whatever, um, <coughs> who's responsible for that, who does what, and who do they coordinate with. Okay, sure. on a motion to table, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank Thanks, you. <coughs> well, I can't get rid of this. Yeah. Agenda item 16. Um, for review and endorsement, the revised community benefit agreement for RMD. Um, we have Attorney Hind, our town council, if I may, Mr. Jefflin. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. As the board will recall, um, at multiple sessions of previous board meetings, the board was provided the opportunity to consider the potential application of the Massachusetts Patient Foundation, one of the uh, many requirements for a registered marijuana dispensary marijuana treatment center to open in a municipality is to um, obtain either a letter of support or a letter of non-opposition from, uh, in our case, the Board of Selectmen. Uh, from the beginning of this process, uh, the Selectmen expressed some nuanced uh, opinions about this matter, but it was uh, made clear that it was also contingent on development of a acceptable community benefit agreement to mitigate certain issues and help make sure that Arlington is uh, not only a suitable location, but is uh, getting the benefit that it should from the placement of a registered marijuana dispensary. A, at a previous board meeting, the board uh, voted to support a letter of non-opposition contingent on the development and a, a negotiation of an acceptable community benefit agreement. Most of the terms are exactly the same as the last time this was before the board, but the selectmen wanted to have a little bit more um, teeth with respect to making sure that financial data was required to be submitted to the town and that we didn't have to go get it from DPH or somewhere else. So you'll see uh, two paragraphs, five and six, which we negotiated with the Massachusetts Patient Foundation to uh, require certain disclosures be submitted um, regarding gross sales and other financial records on a certain time scale and also to make sure that the Patient Foundation, if they ultimately open a dispensary here, maintain financial data for seven years. So uh, from the standpoint of negotiating this, we feel like these are along with the state requirements for maintaining data and reporting 
These are uh, additional measures which help make sure that we have all the financial information that we need to verify what kind of business an RMD is doing in Arlington if it's actually successful after the DPH process. Mr. Dunn? Um, I'd like to move approval of the proposed agreement. Second. Moved by Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Um, I don't see, I know um, I did receive some notification <coughs> from one of the other renters um, in this building. And I don't I think he is here. Um, there. I would like to come up and just make some brief remarks, but I think I'm going to refer you to. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Michael Robb. I'm a Arlington resident. So Alex, we're going on our way to pick up some others. But, uh, you know, we, we just heard about this recently um, from our pediatrician, and it's our understanding that the dispensary is proposed to be in the same building as our pediatrician. And I'll tell you, we've been residents for five years. We're homeowners. Had we known that there was going to be a dispensary in an area, I mean, it would have impacted the way we looked at Arlington. Uh, relative to Lexington or Winchester or Belmont. So, uh, you know, we're surprised that there's going to be one, but, you know, really shocked that it might be in the pediatrician, same building. You know, we just don't want our kids exposed to that thing while they're young. So, just our opinion, but I would guess that a lot of other people share that same opinion. Uh, so, I hope you consider it. Mr. Dunn. Yeah, I'd just like to share with you some, I understand that um, an email went out from your pediatrician, which I think was, uh, it was missing some important facts. And I don't, and I think it was actually wrong in a couple respects as well. Uh, so one of the things, Massachusetts had a, for, had a uh, vote as to whether or not medical marijuana should be permitted in Massachusetts. And that was approved overwhelmingly. In, Mass in Arlington itself, it was voted by uh, more than two to one that Arlington was in favor of having uh, medical marijuana in dispensaries. Then uh, town meeting took uh, two votes over a couple different years, and it chose a very narrow set of the town where a dispensary would be permitted. Uh, and that narrow set of town is, includes the center and the, the, the businesses around it. Uh, and so I absolutely understand that this is not a, a choice that makes everybody happy, because it, none of these votes were unanimous. I just, I, I, I just think it's really important to recognize that there's a lot of will of a lot of voters and a lot of choices that were made uh, in order to do it. And, and, I, and I, I, I understand that uh, you may not agree with it, but it is something that I've, I think that we should be following through on that will and, and making this available. Yeah, I, you know, and I get that. I think, uh, you know, from our perspective, we're not going to patronize businesses near it as often. I mean, if given a choice, we go somewhere else. And really, I think long term, if it becomes a you know attraction for people looking to uh, get drugs or be exposed to it, that's and it'll it, just it'll impact the way. And it, if I could just clarify, this. just and I apologize, uh, where we're at at this point in terms of the selectman letter of opposition or not. Um, what we have to do is take the vote, the state vote, take the local vote, then we look to our town council, our chiefs, our town manager to say, taking into account what was voted in, what's state law, what's local um, bylaw, is, is this something that rises that we can oppose or does it meet all the standards um, required that we would send a letter of non-opposition? That's all we really have purview or control over in terms of trying to effectuate what, what it is you would like to do as well as um, the pediatrician tenant and perhaps any other tenants, um, the more effective uh, place to do that. All we can say is we've looked at this, we've spoken to our department heads. Yes, we oppose it because of these reasons under state law, or if no, which is where we are right now, fits everything that they need to fit under the various laws. Where you all would be most effective, um, and stop me if I can't say anything like this, is um, when this goes to the state agency that it will go to, um, that would be them. a forum. Like, there's, like, we can't really give you the relief. I hear the relief that you're asking. Yeah, yeah. And then the other thing would be, and, and please let me know if I'm stepping out of turn, is um, um, any any business who who is renting in um, that facility, I think it would be much more effective 
um, speaking with the landlord. I'm, I'm trying to think of who are the decision makers. M Mr. Attorney Heim, yeah, help I, me. I just also <laughs> like to note that there's, there, there's some additional opportunity for folks to provide input on a specific site location. So one of the things that have to happen is that in order to have an RMD and RMP, you have to have a special permit and that's subject to environmental design review. Um, there's also local board of health regulations. There's a lot of things that go into how a specific facility operates. For example, you know, is it gonna operate by appointment only? Um, is it going to have you know, other limitations? With there's already limitations at state law which are important to recognize. For example, there's certain types of signage aren't allowed. There's a lot of security measures that are required by state law but also are redundant in our own local regulations. And there's also a few other things that I would encourage folks not to feel like this is the end of the conversation with respect to you know, how do you appropriately balance the rights of not only other tenants, but people with other concerns, like who want to you know, maintain their relationship with a pediatrician and make sure that they're not going to be um, in a place where how the specific entrance to the facility is structured, how access is made, how appointments are made, that those things aren't going to over, essentially you're not going to have overlap with kids going to the pediatrician's office sure. and sure. folks who are basically, you know, patrons of a registered marijuana center. And I think those things are probably possible. I don't want to speak out of turn myself. And then, of course, the, there is the state process with the Department of Public Health, and I think folks can make their concerns known to the Department of Public Health. Okay. Um, Mr. Byrne? Yes, yeah, so um, and I, I do. Um, I, I support this as well, and I've, I've supported it throughout the whole um, entire process. And um, I'm going to support it um, you know, over the, um, the concerns we're hearing tonight because this is a com very heavily regulated industry. And what we're, I think what you'll see on Water Street is a very nondescript um, pharmacy um, is essentially what it, it's going to be. I don't think you will even know it's there from the street. And, and it's, um, again, and it's not, you know, like they're not just, you know, selling drugs out of like a, the back of a car. It's, um, you know, it's an office and you need a, um, you know, prescription to go in there and receive it. So, you know, it, it's not like we're just, you know, allowing pot dealers coming in and running around the streets of Arlington. Yeah. This is a heavily regulated industry, and um, it's it's one that it's completely legal now. And we're going to continue. I, understand. I don't think it's wrong, and I think it's wrong for us to, um, you know, go against our zoning bylaws and state laws in kind of usurping this um, other business interest. Hey, I, so that's I just where I'm at. All right, right. and I want to get to the other two speakers yeah. and then move on because what I'm trying to say is the relief that you want. There's two other ways actually get it um, and unfortunately you know yeah, we have no, to go no. by what, what we're bound yeah, by yeah, that's okay. all right thank that's you thank you thank you um, and with the caveat that I definitely want to hear what people have to say but we're really limited in what our role is here so um, my name is Jason Coville I live on Robbins Road in Arlington uh, I have my two kids here tonight too but they're sleeping right so. um, I also do go to Arlington Pediatrics and was made aware of this uh, there's two things that I just point out. I voted for medical marijuana. If you asked me if I would have voted for medical marijuana I haven't cited in your pediatrician's office, I would have said no. I think that's the difference. It's not necessarily the medical marijuana is an issue, it's the citing of it in your pediatrician's office. Understand the zoning issues as well. There are other places within the zoning area where this could be located. And I think at this particular opportunity is when the, the town has leverage with the business owner because they need this letter from the town in order for their, for their application to go forward with the Department of Public Health to request that they seek a different location within that zoning area. I think that's a reasonable request to make given that it's going to be near a pediatrician's office. And to Selectman Burns' point too, um, we're, not so what, sorry, we're not so much concerned with um, the people smoking pot or anything like that or dealing pot. It's that medical marijuana has been tried in a number of other states as well. Massachusetts has adopted it. The one thing that's been clear from all the other states that have adopted it is that medical marijuana in children don't mix. It just does not work. Uh, there's a lot of public safety issues, public health issues, and for the town to just basically ignore that and say, hey, you know what, we're going to, we're going to allow it in the same building as a pediatrician's office just doesn't make sense. And um, so at least I'd like to go on record as saying there is some people out here that oppose this and would ask the town to at least 
consider using their leverage that they do have at this point with this letter to at least go back to the owner and say, look, can you find another location? Uh, my name's David Whitford. Uh, I live on Water Street, lived there since 1995. And uh, I had not heard anything about this until recently. I'm also a, a reporter by profession. I did a little research today. And I just want to state for the record that um, I see no reason to oppose this. Um, the research that I've seen shows that uh, 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 crime actually, uh, uh, if there's any relationship between crime and uh, medical uh, marijuana dispensaries, it's an inverse relationship. Um, it's, uh, um, yeah, if, if, we're, yeah, if we're worried about uh, um, attracting unsavory elements, uh, um, Maybe we, uh, uh, we, we, we keep banks out of our neighborhood because banks uh, attract more uh, uh, criminal activity than medical marijuana dispensaries. Um, so uh, um, I just want to state, state for the record that uh, I live on the street uh, um, it would, uh, and I sit in my yard and I'd be, I'd be able to look at the building where all this goes on and uh, I have no objection. My name is Sarah McLaurin. I'm an Arlington resident. My kids go to Arlington Pediatrics, and I'm also a psychiatric nurse practitioner at a clinic downtown, and I see firsthand the impact um, of kids who smoke a lot of marijuana while their brains are developing, and the significant increase in the incidence of schizophrenia as a result of that, and the damage that does to individual lives and family lives. And so I just second what the um, person before said about the specific concern about it being co-located in a building with the pediatrician's office and there's a family practice um, I believe in the same building as well and I think that there's been significant people um, in the National Institutes of Health and National Institute of Drug and Alcohol Administration who have spoken out and said that the legalization of marijuana yes it has medicinal purposes but that um, kind of it, in allowing it to be acceptable at an early age just increases the risk that um, kids will use more drugs and get um, more involved in other um, more damaging drugs. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Rafael Baptista. I uh, live on Falmouth Road in Arlington. I've lived here for 20 years. Uh, uh, very close to uh, the Burns House. Yes. Saw you mm -hmm. grow up actually around the time that I. You were away in college, I think, around the time my kids were little. Um, I've heard about this recently also. I just want to come here to be on record to say that I'm opposed to it. Um, my children do go to the pediatrician in that building. Um, from my understanding, did the police chief in Arlington, Fred Ryan, ask that um, if we were to cite a marijuana dispensary, that there would be additional crime and that he would need additional funds for more police? Is that correct? Mr. Yeah, I don't think he said there would be additional crime. He did say that he'd need additional <coughs> police, and that's part of what we're improving tonight is the funding mechanism um, to, from the dispensary's revenues to pay for the additional resources. So if someone were to open a business, which is a normally safe business, say a restaurant or a convenience store, would the police chief ask for additional funding for more police? Or is there something special about a marijuana dispensary where the police chief feels like more police is required? Well, I'm going to perhaps the town manager speak to that, but I can probably rattle off 20, 30 different one-time uses as well as businesses. But uh, Mr. Chapterling? I would only add that the police chief actually in his memorandum in regards to this matter cited the need, uh, the desired need for additional resources based on a number of restaurants and liquor licenses being opened over the past how, how many years, 15 since uh, mm -hmm. liquor license has been offered. So uh, this, this is a specific issue where revenue can be directly uh, got from from this particular type of business, uh, but I think the chief has been pretty consistent in expressing desire for a higher level of services when the need arises. So, uh, and, and actually, what I would like you to do, and I apologize, is it's it's not a questioning back and forth. If you could just say say what, what you want to state on the record, because okay. I've already so explained I'd like the to state process for the record. I guess that uh, the idea of citing a business that the police chief says would require additional policing is probably not appropriate. I think near a pediatrician's office. Um, and I was also, I was like to say that I'm sort of surprised that, um, that the Board of Selectmen is sort of ab advocating its role to say that we should go to the state. Of course, certainly the state is one place that could stop it, but you all have that role to stop it here if you want to. So the idea to say, oh, we can't do anything, we have a very small role to play, 
you were one of the gatekeepers, you could take that role now and stop it at this point, which mm -hmm. I would like you to do. Um, right, no, and I understand that. And then the other form of relief, which we can't get into, is I, I would encourage any of the tenants in that building that um, are occupying that building, um, going to the landlord. Um, right, that would be another gatekeeper. Right. There are many but, gatekeepers. But, but I don't want, so are you done with your remarks? Because I see more people and more hands. Thank you. Mr. Dunn, before we. Uh, no, I'll, I'll okay. wait till the end. Okay. Uh, Mark Meunier, uh, Irving Street, um, no signage. Uh, <laughs> my, my, my daughter also goes to uh, the pediatrician office there. I, I have really nothing against dispensaries, uh, but, but I do question the co-location. It just doesn't sound like, like the right place to have it. Um, I, I understand, you know, there, there, there's a tenant and, and uh, an owner for the building and, and whatnot, uh, but I, I don't think it's the right thing to, um, you know, push that to the landlord to, to make that decision. Um, so I I'd say that there should be some form of criteria uh, in terms of the suitability of the location. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Jim Barrett, uh, Arlington resident. Um, like many people here, I have uh, two children who go to the pediatrician in the building. I'm very comfortable with the idea of dispensaries. I'm very uncomfortable with the idea of them being co-located. Um, that's also sort of a small street and I understand you have your process, so feel free not to answer this or direct me another way, but by my math, just to break even, it's gonna to have to be a $13 million business just to cover the cost of the extra police that's been requested. Have the traffic studies and everything else been done for such a large business that would generate that much traffic in a relatively small street? No, we, 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 have, we haven't examined or looked in business plans, and I, I can't, it's you're fair. saying what you're saying, Mr. Dunn? It's so things like traffic, um, and stuff and, and, and things like that, those go under the environmental design review, which is done by the redevelopment board. So that goes back to something that the, the uh, town council mentioned earlier. So uh, the, one, of the one of the many steps that follows after this is that they need to get a permit to be in that location from the ARB, and that includes things like impact of the business, uh, on, uh, like tra traffic impact. But um, yeah. Yes. Okay, and I understand your position. You're in with the with the town vote. However, it was never the question was never asked. Do you want this beside beside a pediatrician's office? It just wasn't. Um, and as a as a refuge for for all of you, it is still not recognized by the federal government to be legal. And therefore, by federal statute, you could probably hide behind that if you need a a, a reason to go there. Mm -hmm. So once again, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Okay, to wrap up. I'm Dr. Schofield. I'm the one that sent that note. Um, I sent it personally, signed my name, not my office name. Um, I simply knew that this vote was going to be taken, that it was an important vote, and I wanted to let my Arlington families know that uh, if they wanted to speak, if they had an opinion to express, that this was a good opportunity to do it uh, in advance of your taking a vote. Um, that was all that my email was about. It was just simply, if you have something to say, please say it today. Um, I have spoken with the landlord on multiple occasions. He still denies that this is happening. No idea, never heard of it, no clue, no clue. So I'm getting nothing from him in way of what are you actually doing and what are the actual plans. Um, I did get a call the other day from the attorney for the business owner that is trying to put this in, is trying to um, uh, sway my opinion. I, I simply have doubts and I would ask you to, if not vote no, simply defer and, and look at this again. I think the town has an awful lot of, uh, uh, a lot of, awful lot to say about it. Thank you. Thank you and um, um, I want to thank everyone who came out and regardless of how the vote goes, um, if you can still as town council and others have suggested sort of follow this process through when it gets to the EDR, the Environmental Review, with our Redevelopment Board here in Arlington, because um, some of the questions that were raised tonight, um, you'll get a more factual, not only answer to that, but also airing of that in terms of um, if there is a case in point that you definitely have made and are correct in, um, that would be a more, more appropriate forum. And I don't mean to do d double talk or, or anything on that, but I, I do commend you all for coming out and hope, hope you stay with it as well as it sounds like um, the doctor is also following up with sort of 
double entendre success um, with, with the landlord. Um, did anyone, my colleagues, Mr. Kiro? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I think my colleagues Excuse know me. the, the uh, <coughs> concerns I've had with the proposal, uh, but I don't want to relitigate that, that uh, issue here. I feel like we've debated that um, mm -hmm. at length at, 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 at previous meetings. Uh, I, only to say that, that, um, that some of the information that's come to light and other, other things that I have uh, learned you know, speaking with uh, folks in public health and, and law enforcement have, have only strengthened my, my, my original position on this. That said, I did agree after being on the losing end of that first vote to move forward with the negotiation on a, a um, community benefit agreement. So I wanted to ask some questions specifically about the community benefit agreement, which is the, the, the matter before us. Um, mm -hmm. Preparing for tonight, I took our, the, the draft that we have uh, before us and I looked at what other communities have done. And I want to thank the council for all, all his work on, on this, but I, I, I do have some questions because it appears that there are three different elements that you find in a number of the other community benefit agreements to try to maximize the benefit to the community. Um, either, well, not, not either, sometimes they're all in combination, either a, a minimum payment per year. So there is a percentage uh, as we've, we've laid out here, but there's also a minimum payment if that percentage isn't made. Or in some cases, there's actually an escalating percentage over the first few years of operation. Or in some cases, um, there, there's actually a portion which is actually a payment um, to the, the municipality and there's a portion that's a payment to uh, local nonprofits. So I just throw up Brockton as an example, um, negotiated a community benefit agreement. That's, it's similar in some ways to ours. So it's $100,000 in the first year, of the dispensary's operation. And then each subsequent year, it's 3% as we have, but there's a, there's a minimum of 100,000. Additionally, Brockton seeks, you know, 1% of gross profits. Um, uh, starting the second year that go to local nonprofits. I could envision if we had a, a, a piece like that, that that would provide certain revenue for either the Youth Health and Safety Coalition or some of the other um, nonprofits in town. And I'm just, I don't want to put council on the spot, but I'm just wondering if the proper way to ask this, if, if those types of provisions were, were considered and, and rejected by the applicant or? So, Mr. Kiro, we did our own internal review of different types of uh, agreements that were yeah. in place at the time that we negotiated this, and I want to remind everyone that this has actually taken place over the series of uh, a number of selectmen meetings, and I believe our negotiations went all the way back to with the fall at the very least. Um, so, one of the things that we were trying to negotiate for was a higher percentage than some communities were yeah. getting. Um, uh, so there were certain, that piece of it was, was, was part of our focus and mm -hmm. uh, the specific was with respect to a minimum, I don't recall whether that was specifically discussed. I think we had a suite of things that we wanted based on the needs of, uh, as articulated by the police department and other town personnel. Um, and we were more concerned with trying to f make sure that there was some upfront, um, some upfront payment along with a healthy per percentage of gross revenue. I don't know if the town manager has anything to add, but you know there were a lot of things that we considered on the table and went back and forth. I, I don't recall off the top of my head all of the different pieces that we looked at back and forth. I know that we looked at the city of Salem as a model for a little while um, and then wanted to push that a little bit more based mm -hmm. on Arlington's location. The other things that were considered and discussed were things like the likelihood of other dispensaries in the area. As the board may or may not know, there's likely to be at least one dispensary in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. um, there may be two at, at some point in the near future. So uh, the market conditions are a little bit different um, depending on the Excuse geographic me. location and how much competition you're facing. Uh, I, I don't want to advocate on behalf of, it's not my role to advocate on behalf of the, uh, the, the folks who are, we've been negotiating against, but I think what I suspect that they would say is that they're obviously going to be dealing with competition from Boston, Cambridge, and potentially a couple other nearby areas. So 
that's part of the explanation. I, I don't recall all the details of our negotiation at present, though. Okay. I, I just note, I would note that Burlington um, <coughs> did a 3%, but they have a minimum of $250,000 per year and $20,000 in, in donations to Burlington organizations. So I just, I just throw that out there. And I, I'm, I, would, I, would, I would like to say in the, in the absence of any specific voted guidance by the Board of Selectmen, we felt as though we maximized the financial benefit to the community. If there yeah. was specific voted guidance or rejection of this agreement, we would certainly take it back. Yeah. Okay. Can I also add one other thing, Ms. Yeah. Madam Chair? General, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I think we also wanted to, uh, there's a tension between dedicating money to specific sources because there's only a certain amount of money that we're likely yeah. to, to get when we're in a negotiation with somebody, especially when you've got a projected business that even though I think the market for this uh, is starting to flesh out, there's a certain amount of, there's a definite amount of uncertainty that both uh, municipalities facing and um, a registered marijuana dispensary. So I think we wanted to have as much flexibility as we can. You'll see that we, the way we phrase what our, what the, what the money is to be used for are things like community wellness to address some of the concerns that yep. have been expressed here, that we want to make sure that we've got some flexibility and adaptability to use that money where it needs to be used the most. Do we want to concentrate most of our efforts on um, you know, Arlington youth education programs? Do we want to focus mo more of our efforts on potential patients that are going to be on this? Uh, and then obviously uh, the police department's needs were the other sort of one of the other major categories that we considered. But I do recall that we did have discussions about how specific do we really want to be with saying that this money is dedicated for this purpose, or especially as we're learning as a community how to, how to deal with all of the ups and downs of this, do we want to have flexibility? So that's another piece of it. Yeah, I do, I do want to say I, I appreciate that, that there are clauses in here regarding the police department uh, role and placing of security cameras and there are provisions regarding the, um, you, you added the provisions that we discussed the last time around the um, financial um, records being <coughs> over, so um, I, I appreciate that. And, and I apologize, this is a little bit of an uncomfortable forum. I'm used to, uh, you know, we do negotiations. I guess this is not subject to an executive session, so necessarily the, the discussion, the board discussion has to happen. But that's, um, thank you. Okay. Um, you all set, Mr. Chaplain? Okay. Um, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank you. Um, with my colleagues' <coughs> indulgence, if I could take that out of word, um, skip over discussion, future board uh, selections meeting, and take agenda <coughs> item 19, which is the rehearing of Warren Article 22, bylaw amendment, tree preservation bylaw. Mary Ellen Arano and Susan Stamps, and I think there's also Sally. I don't know if Sally's here tonight, but I've heard her name. I just want to um, say to my, <coughs> I'm apologizing for this tickle. I'm sorry. Just to my colleagues, um, I did have, and, and Ms. Stamps, Susan was kind enough to do this, a 57-minute um, phone conversation um, with her for the sake of you all, <laughs> is so that I wouldn't have a 57-minute conversation with her here at the Selectman's meeting. Um, at the last time we had this um, hearing for this uh, tree bylaw, we left it that we tabled it. We felt there were some um, tasks, perhaps Herculean, um, that needed to get done. Um, uh, Susan, Ms. Stamps indicated to me, she asked for the opportunity to come before us again um, um, of the mindset that, you know, there was an awful lot that had to be done within two weeks, and um, I, I'm keeping an open mind, but I'm not uh, convinced that that has all happened. But I will want to hear from my uh, colleagues on those points, as well as I don't want to rehash everything from the beginning. If you could just, you know, five, seven minutes, or just sort of give us report back. It seemed to be two, <coughs> two specific points, or however you define them, so. God bless you. Thank you, Madam Chair, and congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I have with me Mary Ellen Arano, Chair of the Tree Committee and uh, Co-Chair, and also Ed Tremblay, who is also on the Tree Committee. Um, we were here three weeks ago, and we did go off and do everything you asked us to do, and we've completely redrafted the bylaw. 
And to cut to the chase, we've had very positive response from the developers, and I can be very specific about that with names if you'd like. I can go through the specific changes we've made to the bylaw if you'd like me to. I had sent you all an email on Friday, and I enumerated the changes we made. I'd be happy to go through those if you'd like. Um, I'm not exactly sure how much detail you want us to go into. Um, what I would like to is either start with my colleagues, um, if anything they would like to state, and then the town manager and or his designee, or vice versa. And then <coughs> hearing for what comes from these seats, um, might craft better what you need to address and what we already get. Sure. So, if that's okay, Mr. Yeah, Brown? Yeah, no, thank you very much, and, um, and thank you, Susan, and the tree committee. Um, as you probably recall, I, I was not a very big supporter of the tree bylaw at our last meeting. And um, I'm, I'm really grateful for the work that you went back and did. Um, I'm happy to support this now. I think it is a, um, it, it's just a really good show of compromise on, on your part, and um, one that I'm really grateful you undertook. So thank you very much, and I um, look forward to supporting this. Um, any of my colleagues? Mr. Dunn? So, um, I've been definitely a fan of this overall in general from the beginning. I definitely de was worried about uh, the last draft about, and some of the things that were in it. Um, my only concern right now is frankly it's just the timeline. It's just that I haven't had, um, one of the things that I hate is when the Board of Select, and this, uh, and this was, I'm sure through no fault of, of Mr. Greeley, uh, when I was a town meeting member before I was elected to town, it was when he, or, you know you, you get to town meeting and you find out that there was some flaw in something and you say, how come the mm -hmm. board of selectmen didn't see this one when they when they had the hearing on it? And uh, most of the time, I have enough time to like you know really sink my teeth into things that I can say yes, that's why I'm supporting this. And this one, I haven't quite had enough time. Um, and so I am, but at the same time, I am heartened to hear that uh, Mr. Byrne is supporting the draft, and that actually goes a long way towards making me think that uh, it might be ready. So um, I'm ready to vote yes, but also with a little bit of trepidation, not because of the core of it, but simply because I haven't explored it enough. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Chapterling, is there anything? Um, um, did you want to say something, Mr. Gray? Well, um, uh, you know, I, same thing. I, I want to support this, and uh, I'm very impressed with the amount of work you all have put into this. I'm, were there builders opposed? What was the negatives from a builder? Okay, so we, um, we initially, you asked us to talk to Arlington builders about what they would like to see or not see in the bylaw, how they would feel about it, get their input. You also asked us to talk to builders in towns, other towns with these bylaws to find out what the incremental time involved and cost involved was their experience. So we did both of those things. We found out, you didn't ask the question, but we did find out as far as increment, well, incremental cost, um, it really depended on how many trees there were to come down. So I think if you add up the um, relatively minimal cost for the surveyors to put the trees on the, the sort of the plot plan and then replacement trees when it could be two, it could be <coughs> five or six, either you replace the tree or you pay into the tree fund. I'm gonna say the average cost would be somewhere around a couple of thousand dollars for the development. In, in some cases it could be nothing if there are no trees on the lot when they start. Mm -hmm. um, and the additional time was um, a little bit of extra time for the surveyor to, serve, to put the trees on the plot plan a little bit of time for the uh, builder to go visit the tree warden, submit the plans, perhaps have a conversation, maybe be at the site when the tree warden goes out to look at it, maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the process that we envisioned for Arlington, it would be, be going back into the tree warden's office and picking up the um, <coughs> approval once it's approved. So there, I, did I cover everything? I think, I think that, yeah. yeah. I think that you know the direct question of what their concerns were certainly was added time. Yeah. And what's the added time? So, and so the, that's, that's the part we really focused on about minimizing. Come close to the microphone. Sorry. 
just trying to minimize that added time. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, eating into profits obviously was, is a concern. And so we wanted to drill down to sort of, sort of what those added costs would be. Mm -hmm. And as Susan enumerated, it's, you know, putting survey, putting the trees on the plot, which we got quotes for $10 a tree, $20 a tree. Um, and in Arlington, so you can kind of do the math on what that would be for a surveyor. And then it's the mitigation if you do take a tree down. Um, so that was really the, the majority of the concerns. And, and could I but ask um, what Arlington developers you did speak to? That so have get, that the, have the ones for whom I have permission to use their name, um, we, we spoke with um, 10 Arlington developers. Some of them do almost all their work in Arlington. Some do some of their work in Arlington. Um, we were able once, and as a result of those conversations, and you and I spoke about this when you called me, they were looking for simple. Um, it was just over and over again, and I believe that, Madam Chair, that was the message you got from your conversations with builders. So we rolled up our sleeves, we completely rewrote the bylaw, and we made it really simple. Um, we were able to circle back with the builders and we were able to contact five between when we got it redrafted um, at the end of last week and tonight we've talked with five of the ten. Uh, excuse me, was it five? No, it was actually, it was six of the ten. Out of the six, four um, were totally comfortable with it. Um, John Carney, who's a very big builder in town, and in fact, he sent an email to that effect, which I forwarded to all of you. I don't know if you all saw it, and if you didn't see it, I'm perfectly happy to um, read it for the, the listening audience or the no, viewing audience. No, if you could just, just yeah. so, let so, us know uh, the names of who. So John Carney, uh, Scott Seaver from Seaver Construction was fine with it. We have John Quinn from Springfield Construction, who does some work in town, not a ton, but he was fine with it. And then we had Jonathan Nyberg, who works. He puts together deals, as you probably know, for lots of different builders in Arlington. Um, and he was comfortable with it. They're, all of them like trees a lot, and they felt that we had made it very simple to implement Yes, there was an additional cost, but it's a cost of doing business. It saves trees, and we and Arlington is experiencing a net loss of tree canopy, so they understood that, that it was important. The two, um, and then the the remaining two out of the six that we spoke with were, um, I can't use their names. That's I don't fine. have permission. No, I don't want you to. Yeah. Um, the one of them seems to be very focused on all the other zoning bylaws that are before town meeting, and it just is like, mm -hmm. just don't talk to me about another regulation. Mm -hmm. um, and then <clears throat> that was essentially what the other person said too. Mm -hmm. um, so okay, um, and, and if I could at this point, um, I like Mr. Dunn um, support this and its concept and to steal what one of my colleagues I think have said to me, you know, devil in the details mm -hmm. and as well as going through this. Um, and I, I had said to Susan, I apologize if at the last meeting I just seemed so zoned in and focused. It's just, I was looking at it from the limited <clears throat> legal background that I have and, and construction and kind of in phasing this out as well as um, talking with uh, uh, developers, mostly, you know, when they encountered me. Um, I would like to support this, but I do have um, grave, I do have strong concerns around the fact that, A, what the labor um, intensive um, demand will be on the town side. Um, I do know when I spoke with the town manager, um, I believe, and I'm not gonna misquote him, so I'm gonna call on the town manager on this. You analyzed, uh, case scenario if this were in effect last year, how many projects it would affect, as well as um, from that, extrapolating from that, what that would mean uh, in terms of what we would need for an employee. And then my other concern is where, and I do appreciate that this has been simplified. I really felt like everything I said and relayed from developers, you all took on head on. But where this is so, in my opinion, and please correct me if I'm wrong, so, uh, so dependent on uh, the, uh, having a tree warden um, in place, 
which I know right now we do have an employee that's um, stepping up and adding <coughs> his duties and, you know, doing what he can, but he's not acting per se in the 24, 25 hour a week tree warden position would like to have. So with that sort of entree, if you could, or just tell me if, you know, what your fears have been allayed and, and. No, no, I'm, I'm happy to respond. So I, I guess I would um, answer your question about staffing as best I can and then just express only one concern I had with the, with the revision. And I'm sorry I wasn't able to provide it in writing. I didn't see this until mid-afternoon today, so it's sort of on the fly. Um, so Mike Rademacher, uh, director of DPW, and I, under the prior version uh, of the bylaw, thought it would probably be about one day's work uh, for uh, someone in DPW to review plans, then go out and inspect the site. I think um, Mike can correct me, but I think it was 47 projects last year that would have been applicable. Does that sound 57? Uh, oh, 47. Four, it was 40. Okay. 40. I missed so, one. Sorry. So we, r roughly about a day's work, um, s briefly speaking with Mike about it today, uh, with the changes that were made, you know, it's been streamlined. So, you know, maybe about a half a day's work if the same amount of projects went forward. Um, so that's not necessarily a concern, but a statement of fact that uh, there would be some workload required from, from somebody at DPW. As uh, the chairwoman mentioned, we are looking to fill a part-time tree warden position. And though out of the gate, this might not have been something that had been prioritized, it certainly would become part of that tree warden's uh, responsibilities. The, the only other concern that I had, and, and perhaps I'm just not understanding it correctly, is whether or not those in town who are interested in seeing a, a heightened level of tree protection would feel as though this was satisfactory if two, three large trees were taken down on a site and were replaced with um, what would be far smaller trees on yes. the site and you know, try to look at things from the town's perspective that they could think a new bylaw that would protect trees is passed and then see a development happen and have these large, beautiful trees removed and smaller ones put in and say, hey, the town's not doing their job, what's going on? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to some degree, that's a communication challenge, but it was something that struck me as a, as right. a as, as just an issue of concern. Right, and, and, and I, I agree with that, and I did talk to Susan about that, that there's the perception out there that, you know, especially when some of the residents came in that said, look what happened up here on Oldham Road we need a tree bylaw so this doesn't happen when the way that I see what this bylaw in effect will do is that development still would have happened because you know it's built out and it's not necessarily the tree it's the roots mm -hmm. um, so what this bylaw in my opinion um, does most effectively is doesn't really necessarily stop that um, case in point from happening but what it does is allows um, developers to, because they took down a certain amount of trees, pay a certain fee, which I appreciate you're not doing DBH anymore. It's just tree for tree, because I heard that from developer. Diameter breast height, I know what DBH is. Um, but um, those trees in all likelihood will be planted in other locations. It's, it's not that, you know, it's gonna go back there. And I, my only thing in terms of public perception is, you know, a lot of people were coming in and thinking that what this tree bylaw is going to do is this won't happen anymore, and that's not the case. It's really, and and I think you know that message needs to get out there. Um, but are you, I, with my colleagues' indulgence, are you saying that? Um, and what I would like to do is, when I understood it, when I wasn't chair, that this is a bylaw from the um, tree committee that they're presenting to the board that we could vote, um, no action or approval. But we were also being requested. Um, to actually be the lead sponsor on this at town meeting, and especially being chair, um, I would s prefer that um, the board, like other Warren articles, uh, takes a vote on it in terms of support, you know, um, no action or positive action. And <clears throat> since I anticipate this is going to be a very um, uh, uh, lively debate down at um, town meeting floor and I certainly can't hold myself out as um, the architect and knowing all the ins and outs that um, it be as it originally was submitted um, as submitted by the tree, tree bylaw committee or am, am I incorrect in my memory um, if I'm not mistaken it, it's actually in the warrant as submitted a request of the tree committee is that I think so um, no but I do 
correct me if I'm wrong, Susan, but I thought you said from the very beginning we, we want to submit this, but we'd certainly ask the board if they wanted to sponsor it so, on our behalf. I'd, I'd prefer not to do that. So. I, I just don't know of any distinction. Like, I mean, this board is going to make a recommendation to town meeting, and, at that, and we own that recommendation. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's clear that the, the tree committee has been, you know, okay, the driving force right. behind it. Mm -hmm. But I think when, what our vote is is what our vote is. Okay. No, I'm just, no, that's fine. That's right. Right. I'm just saying. Yeah. It's as submitted by the tree committee. So, um, so, um, Mr. Chapterlane, do you feel comfortable that um, if this went into effect, that this would be something from the town side um, would be doable? Yeah, from from a staffing perspective, this is much simplified. It, it certainly seems to have less work. Uh, we haven't filled that part-time tree warden's position. Where we are working towards that, but. Um, you know, if the board voted favorably and town meeting voted favorably, we, we would strive to make it work. Okay. Is there a motion by? I know. No, did actually, you make? Matt, oh. No, I will make a motion, though, uh, um, unless you want to, Dan. I actually, I, what I, was, I was curious what the other members of the audience had to say. I don't know if that's, if I'm cutting yeah. you off, Steve, and if I did, I apologize. No, I'm happy with that. But too. I can see interest from the rest of the audience. Could it, I want to hear what they say. Okay, as chairman, I will now say that I see there's interest from the audience, and if anybody else think that's what you have a good vice chair for. But I think everybody can see where we're going. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to this? May I make one, one quick You know comment. what they say, when you got a W, you should be careful. Yeah. Is there something else well, you need the to? Quick, the quick comment was that we, um, we put in a definition of tree warden as the tree warden or his slash her designee. So that that designee could be, you know, I think somebody suggested the lady um, who sits in the cemetery office could conceivably do some some of the flow on the paperwork. The tree committee can it can step in if the tree department gets really backed up. I think it gives a lot of flexibility. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anybody? Well, may I? Just <coughs> I, are you all? If I may. Yes, Mr. Grilly well, and then Mr. Chapman. We have to have a tree warden to have a designee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I agree with that, Mr. Greeley. So I would say the manager's designee if we don't have a tree warden. But I do think we have a temporary tree warden, don't we? We'll get, I'll talk to you about that later. I just, because I don't want to be, okay. Yeah, sorry. Well, all I was going to say was I, I, I don't think I can let it go having someone described as the lady who sits in the cemetery office. I'm, <laughs> she, I'm she, so she sorry. She is the clerk for the cemetery's I, division I that has wasn't, a yeah. responsibility. I know who I'm she's not, talking I'm about. Sorry, I'm just ignorant. Shared responsibilities, That's all. I, I couldn't let that uh, Okay, so on. now let's hear from, I said, you. when you got the W, you stop. <laughs> Steve. Just name and address. Steve Revelac, 111 Sunnyside Avenue. Um, I'm coming to, I'd like to say a few words on this um, from the standpoint of a homeowner. Uh, during the last year, my girlfriend and I have been planning to uh, replace an addition on our house. Uh, part of our house lies in a floodplain, and so we've, um, aside from all of the other stuff one does when planning a construction project, we've also had to file an NOI with the Conservation Commission. Um, in terms of the added work for a construction project and the length, um, uh, let me just back up one second. So in addition to the, uh, you know, the addition that we plan to remove and rebuild, <coughs> there is also the matter of a tree which has to, will have to come down as part of the construction. In terms of the NOI process, um, the tree part of it was actually very, very simple and took very little time. Um, it was essentially the Conservation Commission told us, you're taking, you're taking it down, you've got to put something back up. What are you going to put up, put up in its place, and where are you going to do that? We gave them answers, and they said fine. And that was about the extent of it. Um, I was, the other, another area where I had a little concern was the replacement ratio. Um, and this really comes from the way the Conservation Commission handles, or and our wetlands protection bylaws. So for us, removing a tree from a floodplain was removing a protected resource from a protected resource area, and the mitigation was to replace a re protected resource. Take down a tree, you put one up. Um, I, I think that's a much better um, you know, kind of replacement policy than the DBH one. Um, the one thing I would... Um, you know, and maybe it's not even that much of an issue, but there are, we're, 
just so that I'd like, to, I hope there's some clarity be in areas where the wetland protection bylaw would overlap with the, um, you know, the tree protection bylaw, just so that there's not um, a conflict between the two. But overall, I, I think this is a, a great idea, and I, I applaud um, Ms. Dams for taking this on. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Um, I don't know, Mr. Byrne or Mr. Dunn? Mr. Byrne? Okay. I'm, I'm going to move approval, and um, I'm, I'm going to thank the tree committee for um, resubmitting this and, and doing you know such great work on this. And, and I think it is acceptable. Um, you know, after putting a bit of thought into this sense, I've uh, come to realize that this is a um, you know much more potentially serious issue in town than I initially considered. Um, but at the same point, this is going to address it in a way that is reasonable to all parties involved. Um, you know, it is not um, overtaxing on, on individuals who want to either build a home or put an addition on a home, um, which was a, a top concern of mine um, going into this. And um, I, I, I think it, it will, you know, and, and maybe it's, um, it was pointed out earlier, it's not, you know, and it's not ideal to everyone, and nor it should be. Um, so, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy with it, so thank you. Second. Okay, on a motion. Uh, any further discussion from my colleagues? No, I just, uh, I just think it's quite coincidental that we also have in front of us the manager's uh, fiscal year, uh, 2017. There's a lot of trees in that picture. How many trees are in this picture? <laughs> Is that a coincidence? No coincidence. No, 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 uh, no forethought. On that. Hey, on a motion by uh, Harry, no further. Mr. Dunn, I'm uh, sorry. No. Um, question for the town council. Uh, an interesting question I hadn't thought about. What about how does it? How do we handle precedents or conflict or anything like that with other, uh, like conservation or wetlands? So I'm not sure that it. I'm not sure I agree that it's necessarily an issue of conflict. It might be redundant. Okay. That doesn't necessarily mean that there's a conflict. Um, I think that. State law is always going to trump, you know, local regulations is the shortest answer to it. So if there is a real conflict between what, you know, state law requires and what a local bylaw requires, we want to follow state law. If it's two competing local bylaws, um, I think that the worst case scenario is that both may apply and the tree committee, I'm sorry, the tree committee, the tree warden and the conservation commission would have to take that into account in terms of, uh, probably in this case, uh, I think the Conservation Commission would have more flexibility than, um, uh, than you would under this policy. Thank you. Um, it, it does say in the bylaw, in the part that um, Mr. Heim wrote, <coughs> that um, these boards, uh, Board of Appeals, CONSCOM, CONCOM, and, and those sorts of boards could waive the requirements of this bylaw. So I think that he took care of it when he wrote the first draft. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to call for a vote now, Susan. So um, unless my colleagues have any further comments or questions on a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Unanimous vote. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Um, I'm going to continue on. I will come back to uh, um, number 18. Agenda item 20, selectman reports and selectman report comments and support material on warrant article 28. And Article 35. Yeah. I'm chair, so, I'm so I don't get to talk that much. So, <laughs> it, it, does Mr. Chapdelaine or any of my colleagues? Well, I can I can speak to our Article 28. Uh, okay. Why don't works. we start with that? Uh, th these are. Um, I'm sorry. Just let me bring it up in front of me. These are FAQs that were provided by Mothers Out Front in regards to the community choice aggregation issue. Mm -hmm. They had asked whether or not the board would consider including it in as part of their report mm -hmm. uh, to town meeting. I had said there's three options, included as part of comments, included as an appendix, or distributed separately mm -hmm. on town meeting chairs. Uh, they seemed to prefer the appendix, and I don't want to directly speak for the board's office, but I think they seem to think that the appendix, like we do with the revolving fund additional information now, uh, might be advisable, but certainly up to the board's prerogative on whether or not that's an appropriate measure. And if I could, um, if I could ask um, Mr. Dunn on the uh, Article 35, um, you did supply yep. the board, and I did have yep. a conversation with you. But do you want to talk about 35, or do you want to talk? Or keep uh, have a comment on 28. It's 28. 28. Let's wrap so, up 28. Um, I am happy to include it as an appendix. I would prefer, I believe, that. Um, it either have a header or a footer or a cover page that says prepared by, not 
uh, this board? And the answer is because while I think it is very informative, there's a couple details in there that I'm not actually ready to say. Yes, that's something that the, as the board I, um, I say. I think that's very fair. So simple on top, provided by mothers out front. <coughs> Perfect. Okay. 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 And do my colleagues want to? Actually, since it's under one agenda item, we'll, I guess we'll vote on both. So, okay. do you want to, Mr. Dunn, speak to Article Thirty? Sure. So, Article Thirty-Five. Um, the Finance Committee held a hearing on the Town Manager's budget, specifically the changes that had happened between the original proposal of the Town Manager's budget and that which was before them. Uh, Chairman Greeley asked me to attend. I did. Uh, the Finance Committee asked a series of difficult, but you know, on point questions that I think were good preparation for what's going to happen at town meeting. And uh, one of the, th I believe four of them went out of their way to say you need something like this in the, in the town, in, in the selectman's report. And uh, so I drafted it and I don't have any particular, um, I'm not like wedded to the language. If there's other language that would make other board members feel comfortable um, or if you choose to disagree with the finance committee and say we shouldn't say anything, well, <laughs> that is the board's prerogative. <laughs> I'm happy to accept this as well. Yeah. And I will just say I did have a conversation with Dan and everything's yeah. in there. So, um, Mr. Mr. Greeley, did we have anything? Mr. No, I agree. But okay, so I guess I will appreciate take. Appreciate Dan's work, it's always. Hey, yes. you uh, couldn't make that meeting, huh? I th he, <laughs> he had a debate. You know, that was the night my wife and I flipped the mattress. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we're going to continue on. Um, we he can do this at the had, end of the I meeting after meeting. adjournment. Um, okay, so I guess I will take a motion from one of my colleagues for um, the selectman report, comments, and support materials so as amended um, on Article 28 and 35 um, by Mr. Burns, seconded by Second. Mr. Curo. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. What number are you here for? Um, with my colleagues, um, it's what? CDB, CDBG. CDBG. Is it okay if we do that and then I'll go back in order again? Sure. sure. Okay, so with my colleagues' um, approval, we'll now go to Article 32, endorsement of the CDBG application. Uh, you want Jen to? Or, sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, or no, yeah, are you, uh, Mr. I, I, Chapter? I just, no, it is. She can stay to the end of the meeting. I just. Yeah, no, no, go, go for it. Okay. <coughs> all right. You just say who you are, even sure. though we all Good know. evening. I'm Jennifer Raid. I'm the Director of Planning and Community Development, and it was a pleasure working with a couple of you, Steve and Dan, on um, a couple of rounds of reviewing applications, as well as Adam. Um, what you have before you this evening is basically the endorsement of the CDBG application, which we would move to town meeting. <coughs> we, um, I, I think since the last time that we've seen each other we received a notice from HUD indicating that we've received we will receive rather by July 1st one million thirty three thousand one hundred and sixty two dollars through the community development block grant program and so this uh, report is basically outlining what we will include as part of the uh, expenditures with those funds as well as some program income so the report walks through uh, the process that we went through the um, allocations that we are recommending and uh, they include things around rehabilitation and housing, public service programs, um, public facilities and improvements, and uh, planning activities, including funding uh, staff in my office. And then uh, the last page of the report indicates the exact allocations that are recommended for the coming year. So, um, yeah, I think that was all that I wanted to share in terms of the report. The only other update that I wanted to pro provide you with also is that we did hire Amy Fidalgo to be the Community Development Block Grant Administrator. She could not be here this evening, but you will, many of you have maybe met her. She was the Administrative Assistant in the Planning and Community Development Office, and she'll, of course, meet with you at future times where we'll have additional meetings on the CDBG program. So I would entertain any questions that you might have about the report or the process. I'm good. I don't know. If Mr. Yeah, Byrne, sure. Um, um, uh, you know, I, I think it's we kind of have this down pat. Um, we do it year after year. Um, I will say that working with Jenny and Amy was um, absolutely fabulous this year. I think um, we're, we're going to see some 
uh, changes to how um, we operate this program moving forward and uh, one that changes that are very welcome. So thank you very much for that. Um, and, and again, you know, as we say every year, this is uh, just not, th this funding is not easy to distribute. Um, we, uh, we kind of put many admirable um, operations up against one another and we do our best to, um, you know, use our ju judgment to fund them. So um, we do appreciate your support. Um, in endorsing this. Um, I, I do have one comment in terms of the letter we received from John Warden where he seems to compare the money that, or the funding that is going to the HCA, and he seems to compare that to the thousands of dollars for public service. And it's important to know that each of those categories are capped at a certain percentage. So the HCA funding is not um, necessarily, you know, going against the public services funding, and it is actually all going within the same category. So, you know, that the funding given to public services cannot be spent on the other different programs like housing. And that's very important to note um, for um, when considering this, because, you know, I think we would all want to give the public services, um, you know, um, exactly what they asked for, but that's just not possible under the uh, funding mechanism. So, thank you. Okay. Um, is there a motion or? I Are we just, did you already move it and I missed? Nope. Um, I move approval and I, uh, of the CDB budget uh, as drafted. And I'll note that this is one of those crazy votes that has, that has six votes. Exactly. Second. Second by Mr. Byrne. Um, and I would just add, just because I have the captured captive audience of, of both of you, um, if at some point during the um, budget year, um, when you all deem appropriate. One of the first things when I first got involved in town meeting was when CDBG came before town meeting. I was very naive. I thought we had a say in it, voted it up and down, and there was a particular program for like $50,000 for lead paint removal down Monotomy Manor that didn't get funded. Mm -hmm. And as town meeting sometimes has the propensity to do, and because I wasn't aware of you know how it actually worked, it turned into a two-night discussion. and. As a result of that, you know, and at that point, I think CDBG was more like three or four million. Don't quote me, but I, I, I remember 3.4 or 4.3. Um, the uh, the uh, then town officials went back and saw that um, for this particular program, there were funds that weren't used from a previous year. So what I would ask um, the town manager, um, if appropriate, if it gets to a point, if, if all the CDBG monies, which are very limited, and they're all on course and they're all being spent. We don't need to know that. But if for some reason a case in point does arise that, you know, monies became available for whatever reason, if, you know, we could be made aware of that so we could say that, you know, because it may be a program we're saying no to right now, but we can say, oh, because of the fact that, you know, Mahan Community Center didn't use, you know, 15,000. I'm, I'm trying not to say one of the thing, people to get their hopes up. We were, we said no to this for 15. So just with that, I'm not asking for a report back on what the budget looks like, but if that case in point does present itself and we are able to restore a program, if when the town manager with Jen and whomever could just maybe put it on as an agenda item, just so yep. we, or, or whatever else, correspondence, whatever you deem appropriate, so. Yeah, I, and, in, in fact, we, um, in the subcommittee even talked about the need to add a mid-year check-in to the subcommittee schedule this year, so I think that's right on point with what you, okay, what you just suggested. Yes, that I'm is trying to make more work for you, but he did. <laughs> no, no, I'm only kidding, I'm only kidding. I, I think and I, I do suggested more meetings throughout I, yeah. the year, actually. <laughs> I do appreciate that, and I want to thank the CDBG subcommittee because I know how much harder it's getting to see all these great programs and, you know, maybe one-fifth we can get there. On a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Bernstein, no further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote, thank you. Um, oh, I'm going, oh, aye. Let's do roll call. You do that, Mrs. Kropelka, just to make sure. Do you want to do roll call or do you want me to take it over? Yeah, just to make sure we have everybody. I'm sorry. What if we have a tie vote? Yeah. Uh, I. Aye. 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 I'm waiting to hear what Adam says. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Okay. Just to make sure that Thank you, where Jenny. I went so quick, yes, you're welcome. we didn't overlook the town manager. I apologize. Sorry. Okay. Um, now we will. 
Um, I guess if it, it's okay with everybody, or we will finish with the articles for review and then go to the discussion of future board meetings. Or, or maybe, why don't we just keep future board meetings to the end? Is that okay? Okay, so let's go to Article 29, table from the March 7th meeting, removal of the easement restriction. Um, so at the, um, at the March 7th meeting, there was a brief discussion where I asked the board to uh, basically authorize me to negotiate on the same basis as the easement restriction or the release of exterior lines uh, from the Venner Road property several years ago. Uh, so I, I did that, and uh, negotiating with Attorney Leone on behalf of the property owners, the Dolans, uh, negotiated an amount of $28,000, really using the exact same approach in terms of amount, um, amount that was uh, paid for the taking of the property as well as a lesser amount of taxes that were paid uh, for the, that slice of land being undevelopable. Uh, and proportionately, that 28000 matches up with what was paid by the Kakaris family uh, two years ago. Uh, the other point that I'll, I'll let town council uh, add more, I know uh, the chairwoman had asked whether or not there were other situations in town that were similar and what kind of precedent we might be setting. Uh, a very uh, specific answer is challenging because an extensive title search would need to be done to really determine where they would be. Though, do, do you want to add to your, your sense of what there might uh, be for similar situations? Sure, so to the extent that, uh, uh, members of the board, to the extent that we, we could try to investigate whether there's some kind of inventory of these specific types of uh, property rights by the town. Uh, we weren't able to find anything that would not require the types of title searches that Mr. Chapdelaine's talking about. Um, and then what I mean by that is that this is basically like an easement, and so it's a property interest that would impact potentially the title of uh, the property when somebody went to sell, which is why these things are in front of us. So we did try to you know, search as well as we could, but absent a better inventory of this type of unusual situation, which we were able to corroborate with DPW is unusual, um, there shouldn't be a lot of these um, uh, exterior lines lying around town somewhere. And the other sort of, it's not perfect evidence, but that I would submit to the board is that as everybody knows, there's a lot of real estate transactions in Arlington, and if this was you know, a present issue on a lot of properties, I think it would come up more often, mm -hmm. but it's come up on these two properties f for, I think, reasons that everybody understands. Okay, thank you, and I didn't want any cumbersome, and I appreciate you doing that. So, uh, is there a motion for Move, re move uh, we recommend favorable action. Moved by Mr. Second. Gurley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any f Mr. Dunn? I'm happy to support. I'm wondering, is it possible for our comment to include uh, what we believe the intent of the owners is to do with the easement, so to speak. Like there's a, uh, the natural question the town meeting is going to ask is, what is going to happen once we do this? Is it appropriate for us to include a comment? I, I think we can try. Uh, in other words, if I can get Attorney Leone or the Dolans to uh, submit to us what their plans are. Did, didn't we talk about this though in the first hearing where we said what we, what, or maybe it's, maybe we should talk about what could happen even? Yeah. So, like. so I, you know, what could happen is that, um, you know, the, the, you have a potential for a repeat of what happened the first time, which is that, you know, that particular house was knocked down and then that lot was subdivided and developed. So we can, you know, apprise town meeting that that, it, that could be a risk of, uh, or not a risk, but, you know, a, a potential outcome using these exterior lines. I'm curious what other board members think. It's gonna, you know, I figure one way or another we're talking about this at town meeting. Someone's gonna ask the question at town meeting, so I guess sort of what Mr. Dunn with uh, a town council has lined out, um, see what uh, Attorney Leone and his clients are willing, bring it to their attention that they will be asked that or, and or we will be asked that. They'll have to have some response. Do they feel comfortable providing that now so that we can review it and possibly include it in um, our final? Am I encapsulating it correctly? Yeah, it would, but I'm oh, I can see Steve Mr. making faith. I am. Um, so I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. If it's going to you know, hold up any sort of process, or I don't think that we really have to do it either with John Leone being there um, you know, at town meeting. And I, I know that he will be um, more than happy to provide um, what's going to happen on the floor. Um, so I, I don't feel like it has to be in the report if, you know, I wouldn't, I just don't want anyone to go on a, you know, wild goose chase to, to yeah. find it when the answer will be at town meeting in the meeting with us. 
It, it does, if I, if I may, Madam mm -hmm. Chair. It, it does raise the practical point that um, actually impacts Articles 22, 29, 32, 33, and 58, that uh, there won't be another meeting mm -hmm. of the board before the report is finalized. So right. wh whatever we decide, the board decides tonight, excuse me, um, you know, we should have some at least ability to wrap it so that town council and the board's office can put it into the report. I, I'm persuaded um, by Steve's point. The answer will be in the room. Okay, then that's fine. So um, any further <coughs> discussion um, on a motion by Mr. Greerly, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Article 33, we tabled this from the March 21st meeting. It just was a little glitch that we didn't actually have the revolving funds listed. We have that, that reference material in there. Um, it's pretty Move, routine. Uh, recommend favorable Move action. Move by Mr. Greeley. Second. Seconded by Mr. Curo. Um, any further discussion or question? If not, all those favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. And now the special town meeting articles six, Minuteman Regional Vocational School bond authorization for Minuteman School construction. Who would like to speak to this? Um, Oh, Mr. Oh, I, I, if, if Selectman Dunn agrees, I, I, I think this probably is best a will report at this point. Yes. So who makes that motion? I, I move that we list this as will report, and we will have to make a report at a later date. Second. Second. Um, seconded by a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further discussion or questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. And we now have final votes and comments for Articles 21, 23, 24, 30, and 59. Move approval. Moved Second. by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Curo. Um, any questions, comments? Is Mr. Sure. Attorney Heim? So as the board uh, can see, wherever I could uh, with respect to uh, develop comments, on the articles that were before you tonight for its, their actual first or in some cases second Warren article hearing, I developed a draft comment. If, you are all, if you're all comfortable with that draft comment, I just wanted to make it clear that um, for the Warren articles that you move positive action on, that you're also basically moving on positive action for the vote and comment. And similarly, if the board is so inclined, if I could summarize my understanding of the uh, tree committee vote, I'm mean, sorry, the tree bylaw vote tonight, I can try to draft a vote and comment for inclusion in the report that reflects the board's understanding so that as many things as possible are included in the report and there's as little as possible will report or, or, or separate supplementary materials. Mm -hmm. Would so we that, need to pay attention to our emails that you're going to send to us because is it March 14th or you're not talking about that deadline? April. April 14th. It's going to, it has to be in, so the print of this Thursday. Okay, so, all right. So, actually, I, mm -hmm. actually, Wednesday night, I have to drop it off so I can pick it up there. Okay. I just want to confirm that the board is comfortable with the draft comments that I included anticipating what your action might be mm -hmm. on those uh, Warren article hearings that we heard tonight. And then secondly, if the board's so inclined, I would be comfortable with drafting a vote and comment on the tree bylaw so it could be included in the selectman's report. Um, and I, I certainly can and would email it to you to make sure that nobody had any individual objections. But if the board would so authorize me, I could basically put together a voting comment that reflects what the tree committee put in front of you and the colloquy tonight. So moved. Second. Second. Any further yep. discussion? Um, and for those of us that you think might need a reminder phone call <laughs> in terms of email, <laughs> feel free to do that. Or you can call all five of us, whatever you want. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. And we will now go to taking out our calendars. That was mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, agenda item 18, <laughs> future board of selectmen meetings. You've got to give me something. Um, I'm not sure. I think we don't have any scheduled as of tonight, right, or do we? We're scheduled for the 25th 28th. of April. 28th, right? Well, the, 20, the 27th, the op I mean the 25th. The 25th, opening, the opening night of town meeting. Right. Uh, we, we talked about maybe having it up to you people instead of having it at 7, 7 o'clock or do you want to change it to 6.30? Or you won't, well, Diane has to be downstairs for you. Right. Um, how does the agenda look so far from uh, the 25th? Kind of keeping it quiet. Well, I, I'd like to start at 7. 
because I'm not going to put anything heavy on. No, well, well, unless we have to. Uh, for the 25th? Yeah. 25th. We, have a, we have two alcohol hearings. We're going to change those. No. Let's, why? Who, who, no, I think we need to go ahead with this. What, talking to the, the, the town manager and town council and the police chief, um, uh, subsequent dates have been um, proposed. Guess I'm not chairman anymore yes. since I wasn't privy to such discussions. <laughs> no, it, in terms of move forward when we can move forward and all the players can be here um, who need to be here and want to be here. Um, so, and that was going to be a part of my new business, but I'll say it now. Um, what Mr. Grilly just raised, I will be um, asking the Selectman's Office to, once we set dates, um, to poll you all on those two specific items, which may be at two different meetings. Just, to, I, I think it's really important that we have a full board that, you know, that can stay. I think we need to take them separate since we're still gonna be in um, town meeting, as well as the dynamics of wh what needs to get reported back and everybody else who has to check off um, what they need to do. One's definitely ready to go and the, and the second one isn't. So Mrs. Kropelka will be polling everybody on dates to say, you know, will we have a full board? And then um, the town manager and or um, town council will be um, sending out information and following up with phone calls. So you're looking for a meeting on an unusual date, is that correct? No, no, we can still meet on the Mondays, but I just want to make sure the two Mondays that we pick that are town meeting Mondays, that five of us are going to be here. Diana, excuse me, you said it's after the 11th, but the 11th is on a Wednesday. Do you realize that? Which will be in town meeting. That they okay, you know what? I must have been looking at the April thing. So let's start with May. But you want? I haven't pulled up my case. Does everyone else have their calendars? I'm behind you all. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. About 9 and 23. Does that work good? Um, no, that? I can not do nine. Not do nine? Okay. Is there, um, on those two issues, is um, the one that we were thinking is ready to go first? Um, is there any sort of time um, consideration we should have? So the, the two time considerations are one, the notice. Um, I, you know, a, a formal notice has to be issued by my office. Mm -hmm. or, I'm sorry, the, yeah, formal, formal notice has to be issued. Um, and then the second issue is just trying to schedule around um, the uh, inspector. Mm -hmm. um, I need to basically have the um, basically the witnesses in place that will be necessary mm -hmm. um, because I don't anticipate that it will be. I anticipate that it'll be a very formal formal presentation of evidence. So there's about two or three members of the police department at a minimum that I have to work with their schedules. How about May 11th, which is also town meeting? If we have the selectmen's meeting at seven o'clock that night, I, I'm not, I'm out. Sorry. Okay. Um, how about the sixteen? Two and sixteen. We is too too soon for the no. How about well, given that we're in town meeting, we might need the board might need an opportunity to vote, say, on the Minuteman position, or there there may be. All right. How about two and sixteen? No, I, I, I will not be here on two, sorry, but that doesn't mean you can't still go ahead, but in terms of you wanted a whole board. Okay, well, we'll I can do nine, 16, or 23 for the full board in terms okay. of. Okay, uh, how many of us can be here on the 9th? Can the four of us all be here on the 9th? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's do nine. And Knowing it's probably still town meeting. It's probably still town meeting. Yep. Nine, and then on 16, what? Because 23 doesn't work for you, right, Mr. No, no, I can do 9, 16, and 23. Okay, I want to do 9 and 23. But Joe said you can't do 9. Oh, Joe can't oh, do I nine. cannot do 9. No, I can't do 9. Okay, we're definitely under the 23rd. <laughs> and um, can we wait? I mean, I hate to do 16 and 23 and have that much time pass. We probably need a meeting before then, correct? So um, Joe can't do 9, so 2 and... 16? Can't do two. Uh, no one, two? Well, I can't be here, but. Yeah, but that that's fine. But, but I'll, we'll have meet. a full board on the 16th, right? I guess. Yeah, I mean. Well, you can't be here nine either, right? Nine, 16, and 23. I can be here. All right, somebody else. I usually. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I haven't heard two the 23rd so far is the only date that That's I've heard the that, that works for it, or the 16th works 16 for and 23rd we have but 
would both work, but right. that's, I, I think that's fine. Board. I mean, we can just put anything off till then and move And if forward. there's a need for another, a yeah. special right. board meeting on the second or the ninth, not, not on these issues that all, all five need to be in attendance. Okay. We can, no, it's the just board can call one. Yeah. Okay. Right. May 16 and May 23rd in May. Okay, June, what say you all? May 16 uh, and May 25th, you said? Okay. No, 23rd. 23rd. Yeah, one, uh, just, uh, I have to enter in those last ones mm -hmm. before I go ahead and look at my next one. We did just say 16 and 23rd, right? Yep. Good. All right. I'm not even <laughs> saying anything. I'm just having to make sure we did. Before, uh, 23, and then what about the 6th and the 20th? Hold on, sorry. Yes and yes. Okay. For me. Okay, six and twenty. Hearing no objections, uh, or Mr. Grilly. Right. Yep. Okay, then we go to our summer schedule in July. Eleven or eighteen. Oh, one so moment. Wait, June six and twenty. Oh, I, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, I have a. Sorry. Yeah. Six. <coughs> I do have a conflict in July. Let me double check what mm -hmm. it is. I cannot do July 11th. 18th? Does 18 look good? Okay, 18 is set. Yep. August? I cannot do the 15th. <clears throat> 8 or 22? Both are good for me. Does anyone eight or um, have a pref? Oh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Trying to catch up. Um, I would say 22, and if not, eight. I think either of those are all right. Um, the what works best for you? The eighth works best for me. Okay. <coughs> God bless you. Bless we'll you. say the eighth. Okay, you want to continue into September? Uh, maybe we've had enough fun for one night. <laughs> I would propose the 5th, the 12th, the 19th, the 27th. Okay, there's, that's all set. Okay. Sorry, what did we settle on for August, sorry? 8th. 8th, okay. July 18th and August 8th, right? Yes. Correct. Thank you. Nick can't wait. So, uh, correspondence received, a motion to receive by? So moved. Mr. Burns, seconded by? Really? Really? <laughs> he right, yelled it out. Um, does anyone have any comment or um, on, if not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Unanimous vote. New business, Mrs. Kropelka? No, I talked to you about everyone for um, Sunday. Parade. <clears throat> I have all your answers. Johnny Hyam? No new business. Thank you. Mr. Town Manager? I have no new business. Mr. Greeley? Yes. Uh, so, first of all, I would like to thank the voters for returning me for my 10th term here to the Board of Selectmen. It was not the best day there for weather, but it was wonderful uh, for all of them to go out. I want to thank the Arlington Jazz Band and the Madrigal Singers and the Select Tones for the uh, meeting of the Historical Society and the uh, singing around the piano show that went really well. I want to congratulate Mr. Stephen Byrne and Ms. Jacqueline Doherty on their engagement to be wed. Whoa. And finally, uh, one official piece. Uh, the chairman has asked that I continue uh, working with Adam's evaluation, which all five of you have, and Karen and I are working on the compilation of that, and uh, we will bring it up with uh, uh, your agreement on the, uh, tr at, for the 25th meeting. That works. Is that all right with everybody else? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Byrne, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Um, you and your fiance. Very much. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that was probably enough new business for <laughs> no, 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 the no. last uh, few weeks, but um, years, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, on um, actually, I, I wasn't um, able to plan it on Saturday, but they did have a hockey tournament fundraiser down the rink for the Macriffin Fund, mm. um, which uh, was apparently very well attended and um, was a, 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 just a spectacular day from what I've heard. So it, I wish I could have played, but um, obviously I'm glad to everyone who was able to uh, participate and donate. So thank you. Um, well, for congratulations, Mr. Greeley. Congratulations, Mr. Byrne. Congratulations, Ms. Mahan. Congratulations, Mr. Dunn. All, all of your, all of your elections, your engagements, and, and everything. Nick's feeling. <laughs> Do you have anything that can be congratulated? <laughs> um, uh, I, the only thing I wanted to mention is that uh, we do have long-range planning committee. Is this Wednesday one of the items on the um, <coughs> the main item? I think really on the agenda is going to be discussing the um, timing of potential debt exclusions for our uh, school facilities. I know a lot of us hear about this. I, I have a feeling Mr. Chapdelaine and Ms. Mahan and I, in some ways, tip of the spear through the school enrollment task force. We, we get a, a lot of communication on this. Um, and so, but, but uh, this is where the rubber starts to hit the road and we'll be having those concrete discussions, I think, um, starting uh, this Wednesday. The only other thing, um, I did want to say I wanted to publicly apologize. Uh, earlier this evening on one of the other agenda items, um, I want to apologize to the uh, town council and the manager. There were, I raised some questions and concerns that I probably sh properly should have uh, uh, raised with you directly as soon as I had flagged them on one of the items. So okay. I apologize. Thank you. Mr. Brown, Mr. Vice Chair, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Um, just two items. One is um, Minuteman has, is really rushing to the front, and I've been doing a couple meetings. It hasn't been getting the time that it deserves lately from me because of work, but I finished my conference on Saturday, and so I'm hoping to um, put some paper out in the next few days on that. And just seconding what um, Joe just said about the uh, about you know pending overrides and things like that. I was as we were writing down those dates for the upcoming thing. I was like August eighth. I bet we've got, uh, I bet I know what's gonna be on the agenda. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe on August 8th, it's gonna be what, you know, picking a date and, and a language and a, an amount, so. August is generally a pretty slow month too, so. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, yeah. It used to be. <laughs> There's no slow months anymore. <laughs> Any other new business? My new business is I'll entertain a motion to adjourn by Mr. Mr. Grayley seconded by Second. Mr. Cure. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed, stand up vote. We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>